Snoop. And so we ended up mixing them in high school. So that okay. So that's where so that's where Cold Eastwood comes from. Then it comes from yeah. And you know what's funny? Snoop like I, I've been I've been going by this name since like the mid '90s, but I never really paired it up with Clint Eastwood. I don't know why. I mean, I've never been a big Clint Eastwood fan. <laughs> I guess I like Snoop more than I like Clint Eastwood growing up. <laughs> See, that's what I thought. I thought that it was a playoff of uh, Clint Eastwood. I'm like, okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. But I totally man. forgot that you used to call Snoop Snoop Eastwood. Yeah. And, and that was from The Chronic, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they referenced it in Deep Cover as well in that in that single. But good yeah. song, man. I know, good times. That's my favorite stuff back then. Yeah. So that's where I come from. You know, I... I I don't. Before we go live, you know, like the whole. Well, we actually are live, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so let's do it. Let's let's talk gaming. You lead the way. Yeah. Yeah. The show. Yeah. No. Absolutely. You know, I like to. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes every once in a while, I like to uh, go live without uh, everyone knowing. You know, kind of get the kind of get the uh, conversation. Natural. But, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, hey, welcome everyone to podcast number eighty nine of Rap Basement Radio Arcade. We have a very special guest. This evening we have uh, Colt Eastwood, who's joining us. Uh, many of you have checked out his uh, YouTube channel, and um, like I, like I, I, I mentioned to you earlier, Colt, I think that uh, uh, some of the stuff that you put out there, man, great production values, man. You and um, and Jay Fonzarelli, and they were talking about that before we went live. So yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And um, as always, uh, we are joined by our co-host. We have B Money. B Money, what's going on, man? Not much, man. How you guys doing today? Oh, doing good, man. Doing good. Just waiting for the X to arrive, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I thought you got it like long. I could have oh. sworn I thought you 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 picked it up day one. No, oh, I I pre-ordered it like in the middle of August when everybody else did, but uh, I did site to store. That's normally how I order stuff from Walmart because yeah. it's right next to my house, and I didn't realize that they were gonna wait till they got it and then ship it to me dumb mistake so here i am sitting just playing on yeah. pc hold myself over with all my pc stuff hey there you go man at least you got some stuff to play right that's, why, wait. You, that's why you have to have more than one platform so you don't get bored facts <laughs> <laughs> this is true and we have uh mr negative john joining us this evening what's going on man <laughs> To be able to indulge one's curiosities and passions, at least the ones that cause no harm to others without the constant threat of judgment and reprisal. This is the purpose of the liberation rights. <laughs> being a fanboy means not being made a criminal for what you know, or what console you love, or what you choose to think or not. In order to overcome, plunge your orb into the pyres of... <laughs> I can't do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my <laughs> god, dude. I lost it right at the end, man. Shit. Yeah, that... <laughs> oh my god. That's, uh, dude, that is so spot on. Hey, oh, Colton, I, lost, you... I lost it right at the end, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Colton, have you played, have you played the game Pyre? I haven't, no. Okay, no. so he, so that is the, I, I always forget his name, John. So you have to remind me. It's, uh, it's, it's he's just the voice. It's just called, just called the voice. Yeah, so the he's, voice, huh? He's the voice uh, in uh, Super Giant's newest game, Pyre, and he—that's how he—he he literally speaks like that. And and John does the like the perfect uh, impersonation of this character. We need, yeah, we need to get Greg uh, uh, Greg Cassavan back on so I can do it for him. Yeah, we do. I need to t I need to reach out to him um, to see when we can set that up. Now that they may they may have some downtime, I think now maybe. So. Uh, okay. Enrique, I'll point this out. We we haven't considered the possibility of actually uh, doing it not as the voice, but what if we did it as like Christopher Walken, right? <laughs> like, what if you played that shit? <laughs> like, you know, get your music going, and you're like, you know, <laughs> well, you know, the stars align once more on Wednesday night. The <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I can't do it. All right, let's talk about video games. Yeah, let's talk about video games. So, <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, Jesus. I forgot what I was going to say now. 
so cold, man. So uh, why don't you why don't you give us a little bit of of, of uh, your background? You know, like when you started gaming and oh, you know, how long you've been gaming for? <laughs> Are you like us? Time like time. thirty years plus? I'm old. I'm old. I started gaming like around eighty two, eighty three on an television. Pitfall. Nice. Oh yeah, I had in television the uh, the little uh, the, the, the you had the discs on the dial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You had the slide on template that you pointed to the phone button with the curly cord. Oh yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, started there and I've been gaming uh, all the way up until uh, when I got in high school and my brother made fun of me, so I ditched gaming for a good ten years <laughs> of all things. Oh my God. Yeah, so I uh, came back to gaming midway through the three sixty cycle and I've been like crazy ever since. So yeah, pretty interesting. Nice man. So what do you what are your favorite like genres? Uh, what do you what do you typically play? Is there any specific genre that you usually? Yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for third person uh, action games like cover shooters, um, action adventure games. I like the first person shooter games and racers and uh, RPGs like Fallout, Borderlands, Skyrim. You know, Mass Effect, that sort of thing. I'm I'm kind of stuck in that what I just told you in in 20 seconds. I'm kind of like locked in that genre. I don't really care for RTS. I don't like uh, anime Japanese style games. I don't play. Um, no, I love them. I, I missed I missed like the era in the 90s, in the late 90s and early 2000s when everybody was playing RTSs and the old school RPGs. Like I just never was in that, so I never dipped back into it. But that's gotcha. that's pretty much me. If, gotcha. if I'm being totally honest, right? So let me so let me ask you something. Is how good is The Witcher Three? Uh, everybody loves it. Aside from uh, that shitty combat. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought that's funny you said that negative because, like, w when I was playing that, I was like, why don't they bring the camera in as soon as you go into attack? Why don't they bring that camera in like twice as close? Because they have some pretty cool like uh, animations when you're fighting. But I don't know. Uh, it, um, in The Witcher Three, Geralt controls like two cats in a bag with an air horn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the PC Gamer gave that the the best game of all time. It is not, not the of best everything. game of all time. The best game uh, of all time is Final Fantasy VI. So that, I, I disagree with that, sir. <laughs> I built my PC in 2015, and and Witcher came with my uh, my video card. And so I said, I'm going to play this. Everyone's talking about it, and I put like 40 some hours in. I never finished it. Um, I enjoyed the side quests more than I enjoy the main quest. The main quest I couldn't care about. I, will, I wasn't enjoying it. I will agree with you. The um, as much as I don't like The Witcher Three, and I don't like The Witcher Three, and I'm somebody I put 50 hours into The Witcher Three before I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, the combat was just so bad, and Geralt controlled like a fucking kid on slippery. On, he controlled like a kid on Ritalin who hasn't had Ritalin in a year. It was That's slippery scary. combat, oh. right? It was bad. You know? Well, it, it was just it was loose. It wasn't. It didn't flow well. But then again, I'm a, I'm a Souls guy. Um, but I will say that the Bloody Baron side quest is one of the yeah. finest examples of narrative uh, in this current generation. And oh yeah, I, I love the, the talking. There's like a tree, a living tree. There was a three witches, and there was like the little boy that couldn't talk, and there was like a ghost thing. Those were cool. But when I was doing the whole Siri thing, I was like, I don't care. I don't care. And people love that game. And when they bring it up, you know, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I just tell them, yeah, it was. It had it's it's great. I guess. Sorry. But you know, a lot of my friends love that game to death. But I'm a huge fan. I think it's, I wouldn't say it's the best game ever, but it's probably one of my, it's probably one of my favorite games. Well, it's definitely one of my favorite games is console gen. And it's, it's, it's a fantastic game. I mean, it's well made. It offers more than most any games offer, but my biggest problems when I played it, I couldn't stop thinking, why isn't this doing what Skyrim's doing? And here's another weird one. Why isn't it doing what red dead redemption does? Did any of you guys play it and it felt like Red Dead Redemption, like being on the horse, being in this semi-open world, and and yeah, you... yeah. Um, I I I think the uh, <clears throat> obviously, I mean, there are some differences. Um, I, I don't think that the. I mean, look. Well, I mean, let's face it. I I, I thought the combat, and I'm probably gonna get some people pissed off at me. I thought the combat in Red Dead Redemption was bad too. I thought the third-person shooting was rote and uninspired and didn't feel good. Um, you know, and and I also didn't like the comment when in, in The Witcher Three, but but you know the character of John Marston, uh, to me, was just far more compelling, uh, than than Geralt was. You know, because Geralt was, it, it, I I can hear Enrique just gnashing his teeth. Um, but <laughs> Geralt to me was just a uh, 
he was very much your typical, you know, like, you know, oh, I've got silver hair and I've got weird eyes <laughs> and I've got a sword and I've got a deep voice and I'm going to fuck yep. everything that moves, you know, that, <laughs> I, I, that's, that was Geralt, you know, that was Geralt, you know, and, but John Marston, uh, John Marston really intrigued me one because he was you know he was an anti-hero he wasn't really a, an incredibly heroic character um but i loved his his redemption arc but i also thought he, uh john marston represented an interesting break from other uh rock star protagonists in that yeah you know you know like you know it, you know you know look at the grand theft auto games of nico bellic nico bellic one minute you are you're having a heartfelt conversation with your cousin and then the next minute you can get in a car you, you and you can say you know you know nico's like oh you know i'm trying to do right by my family and then he gets into a car, pulls into an alley, gets a BJ from a hooker, gets out, beats the shit out of her, takes his money back, and then runs her over. Um, you know, like like you can do these things. <coughs> excuse me, in Grand Theft Auto, and for me, like it it takes me out of the narrative completely because I'm like, okay, well that doesn't sync up with the conversation that Nico Bella just had five minutes ago, where where he was talking about how much he loves his family and he wants to make he was trained he would love to have a better city. Um, but John Marston, if you uh, you know he's a married man, and if you go to one of those prostitutes. Yeah. You know, in a Grand Theft Auto game, you know, you you know, you take her upstairs and you you know probably give her a Boston steamer or something, you know. Oh, what? But, but a Boston steamer. Um, but uh, but in in Red Dead Redemption, he says, "I you know I'm sorry, man. I'm a married man." You know, and uh, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? This is actually refreshing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, especially, especially for a Rockstar game." And th that is th that is why I I put Red Dead Redemption up above the pedestal that I do uh, Witcher Three simply because. The narrative and the characters kind of subvert those expectations that you would have from a Rockstar game, and I, I really thought that was interesting. That's actually a good point, John. I've never thought of it or looked at Red Dead Redemption like that. You know, um, I I always did because like um, there's times when someone says, "Hey, Mister, Mister, come help me. My friend's being hanged," and I'd hustle over there. And once in a while, I wouldn't get that shot on the rope, and that guy would end up dying, yeah. and I would feel bad for John because I knew John. Wanted to make sure he saved that person. He wanted and to help save that. That, yeah, yeah, and you because uh, I I really felt role playing in with Marston. And I always, hundred percent on that game. I I always did the honorable thing. I was always that honor meter is crawling up because um, you were getting to know the character. Uh, it, I mean, it's I don't even know how we could still still talk about Red Dead when we were trying to talk about Witcher, but uh, just when Geralt would climb on the horse and you're in this open world, I'm like. Why isn't this feel like Skyrim? Why doesn't it feel like I did when I was playing Red Dead? I, when I was in in Witcher, I didn't feel like I was exploring and and I wanted to see what this world was all about. I don't know. It just didn't it didn't stick with me like it did everybody else. People love that game because it's so fantastic, though. Well, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, whether you like I'm, it or not, like the, like the polar opposite. Like I can never get into Skyrim, but like soon oh, as yeah? like the Witcher, like Witcher, like instantly grabbed me. I played the game for like two hundred hours. Uh, did like all the side quests. Um, played through partial of like one of the DLCs. I still need to finish finish the other one. But like, I can never get in Skyrim. I can never get in a Fallout. But Witcher was like an instant. It grabbed me right away. So, and I, you know, I think you know, and, and that's fine. You know, like people, you know, it, it takes all it takes all different kinds to make the world go around. And and you know, there are some people who hate the games that I love, and and that's fine too. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I think that I think that one of the things for me was yes the witcher 3 was a beautiful game uh from top to bottom just a very well crafted game and cd project red are very good at what they do but yep. i am a huge jrpg guy so i like fantastical landscapes and I, you know and and like i was like okay so you know it's there's some forests and some mountains and okay um you know it, it just didn't i don't know there, there wasn't <clears throat> for for whatever reason the world didn't have that that magical like it's one reason it's it's you know one reason why I like the uh, or why I love the Souls game so much is because the environments are just as much uh, a, a character in the game as they are uh, it, as as the NPCs and the creatures are. Um, you know when you think about areas like you know Blight Town or you know the Undead Burg or it's a good point. Yeah, you, you know, and, 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 and those places just ooze personality and and there's a dark. Uh, a really dark, horrific aspect about them. Like you know, you're walking through these places. You're walking through, you know, the uh, you know the graveyard of giants. You know, and and, and you're like, how? Or, or like uh, another great one, Anna Orlando is probably the best, uh, the the best one I could I could I could use. As you're walking through Anna Orlando, and it's this pristine castle, 
in Dark Souls One, but it's just it, there's nothing there but these uh, these um, possessed knights, the silver knights trying to kill you, uh, and and you think to yourself, but but the city itself is untouched, and you're like, how did it get to this point? Like, where are all the people? Like, what what happened here? And that sense of mystery and allure is what kept me going through the Souls games, and I just didn't find that in The Witcher Three. I, I just didn't. I, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's just a problem with me, but that's. I mean, I, I I could see that, John. Like it, it, The Witcher Three, it's it's very. There isn't anything magical, I guess per se. There's it's like you said, mountains and trees. Um, probably feels more like like a Skyrim type game, at least the environment. Um, yeah. so I can see that. I can see that. You know, when you compare it to other games like some like like Souls or Final Fantasy. People are talking uh, uh, 150, 300 hours in chat. I actually have three hundred and twenty three hours in Bloodborne. Uh, I think Chicken Spaghetti's got three hundred hours or one hundred fifty hours right now. We happy few. You yeah. try to get three hundred. Get on my level. Three hundred twenty three Bloodborne across three characters. Are you serious? Yep. Three. I'll pull, wow. I'll, I'll pull it up. And show you. That's, that's insane. That's insane. So, um, yeah, that's that was a um, that's interesting. Interesting topic. You know, I never looked at. Uh, I never, I never looked at John Marston that way and, and Rockstar Games and, and that being a Rockstar game and, and looked at that from that perspective, John, like you just mentioned, like compared to like GTA and some of the other stuff they do. Oh, man. Yeah, that's interesting. I've yeah. always looked at it that way yeah. for years. Me too. That's why I can never really finish a GTA game. Like, I think the GTA never... games are massively overrated. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. See, I like the characters, Franklin. Uh, I mean, Trevor was hilarious in five. He was hilarious, yeah, but, was he, but, but like I, I like Michael the- wasn't likable. Uh, Franklin was sort of likable. Trevor was funny, but I mean they're nothing compared to what John Marston brought in personality. But um, it's amazing. Yeah, but, but, but here, here's the thing for me, right? Like, for it's for me, it's not so much about likability, right? Like, I don't need a character. Like, it's great when a character is likable, but I also again played three hundred something odd hours of Bloodborne and Dark Souls. Like, so I so I am. I'm fine with a paper cutout of a character that represents me in the game. I'm fine with a faceless, nameless avatar. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but if I'm playing a story-driven game like Grand Theft Auto or like Red Dead Redemption, I want a character that I can relate with. Um, and, uh, and, and I can relate to John Marshman because I'm married. I love my wife. I would never, ever, uh, I would never, ever betray her trust. Um, and I've done things in my life, primarily when, you know, at war that I'm not particularly proud of, but I did them to survive. Um, so John Marston's arc of redemption really resonated with me on a personal level. Uh, whereas I can find nothing relatable whatsoever about Michael, uh, Franklin or Trevor. They're, they're entertaining characters, especially Trevor. He's funny. Mm-hmm. but I can't relate to them. And if I can't relate to that character, it, I have a hard time becoming immersed in that narrative. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Um, hey, John, there's actually a question for you, the live chat. What's up? Uh, All Day Digital wants to know if you had to go with one, Bloodborne or Dark Souls? <sighs> oh, man. Um, I am going to say... Okay, from a gameplay perspective, Bloodborne, because I love the trick weapons and I love the speed of it. Um, from a lore and a aesthetic, uh, Dark Souls, uh, the original Dark Souls, because I'm a huge fan of dark fantasy. Um, and I'm a huge fan of really, really, uh, this is going to sound silly, but it really obtuse, hard to follow storylines, because I like that. I like the feeling of piecing together the narrative for myself and f- kind of having it slowly dawn on me what really happened in that in you know whatever world i find myself uh getting into um and uh, so yeah i i would i would for, yeah so like the answer i guess is both from a gameplay perspective bloodborne and from a from a um a just a, a general worldview perspective uh dark souls all right cool all right let's um let's, let's go to our first talk of the first topic of the evening i think you said first taco i'm like dude yeah, man, serve, yeah, serve right. them up man i know right <laughs> <laughs> we got tacos tonight, people. We uh, last week we were handing out free video games. Uh, this week we're handing out free tacos. Let's do it. Yeah. So um, Xbox One X X. I can't even talk today. Xbox One X launched yesterday. Finally, it's here. The beast. And um, no one on the panel has one. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> right. I probably won't have. I probably won't ever have one. So yeah. Um, Cole, I know you, yours is on the way. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm so dumb. <laughs> yeah, uh, mine is too. Um, probably not till later on, though. The week, Friday, maybe at the earliest. Um, but I mean, the reviews have come out. I think they yeah, have been pretty positive. I think they're more or less um, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think obviously, look, I, I don't think it's, I don't think, at least I'm not surprised by some of the reviews. Uh, you know, I, Microsoft has been pretty good at telling us what this thing is and explaining the hardware. I mean, I think the only question now is, you know, how soon are we going to get more games? Um, you know, uh, how are this, how are third party developers going to support this? Um, well, I mean, I think the answer is, you know, I mean, so. Just like the PS4 Pro, there's not going to be any, uh, you know, Xbox One X. I still want to call it the Scorpio. Um, Go ahead. The, yeah. the, there's not going to be any any X specific or X exclusive games, right? Like everything yep. that plays on the X is going to have to play on the on the Xbox One S. So right there, it is, in some ways, hamstrung in the same way that the PS4 Pro was. Mm -hmm. um, I have maintained. Uh, you and you guys have heard me say multiple times. I've maintained over the past year, especially over the past four or five months, that the X would sell better to the Xbox Core than the PS4 Pro did to the PS4 Pro or to the mm -hmm. PS4 Core. Yep. Um, I still don't think, from a sales perspective, it's going to move the needle for Microsoft in any meaningful way. I think this is because I mean, you know, Phil Spencer came out and stated himself, this is not something for the mass market. This is something for the for for the core audience, and it, it's got a core premium price. Uh, what is it? Four, it's four ninety nine, right? Four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, uh, I expect it to do well this holiday. I, I don't think it's going to propel Xbox to a November NPD victory, which is fine as long as it sells well. That's all anybody should care about. Um, uh, but I, for, like for me, uh, you know, somebody asked me, John, are, are you planning on picking up an Xbox One X? And I said, Well, no, probably not. And uh, and they said, well, you know, real gamers have all the consoles. I'm like, okay, let me explain something. So there's this little thing called money and time, right? And uh, I I have limited quantities of each. Um, so I I, I I will probably pick up an X one or an X one S this holiday, an Xbox Slim. Uh, I am planning on picking one up. I don't need an Xbox One X. Um, it, which is and and that that's the thing, right? Is is that like you know people have said, well, the Xbox One X caters to the to the core crowd, and that's true. Um, but I also don't think it's about I don't think it's all about graphics for the core for the core crowd because I mean you guys know I am as hardcore a gamer as it gets. I mean for for fuck's sake, I have three hundred twenty three hours in Bloodborne, um, so I am as core as I play games literally every day. But you still day. have a base Xbox One, but you want to upgrade to an S. I don't have an Xbox at all. Um, oh. I have a PS4. I have a PS4, a PS4 Pro, uh, a 3DS, and a Nintendo Switch. Um, I uh, I played primarily in the seventh gen. I split my time between the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And this generation, I just went PS4. Um, uh, you know, and I don't see myself changing because I mean, I don't. You know, I right right now my favorite console is the Nintendo Switch. So I don't give a shit about visuals. I give a shit about whether or not games are fun and good. And if they're fun and good, I don't care what they look like. I will play them. Um, do look surprisingly good, by the way, on the Switch. Do look surprisingly good on the Switch. I probably won't pick it up simply because I got it on PS4 and I don't travel a lot. So, what's the point? Um, but you know, like it, my favorite console right now is the Nintendo Switch. Um, I think it is a much more enjoyable and interesting console than either the PS4 or the Xbox. Uh, so it's not just about grads. You know, you know like for me, like I like I'm part of the, I'm I am the chorist of the core crowd, and for me, it's not about graphics. It's about fun. Um, and the Nintendo Switch just speaks to me uh, in, in that manner more so than either the PS4 or the Xbox One. So, yeah, no, I hear you, I man. Think, I, think, I think it's going to do well this holiday, though. I think it'll do well. And 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 you know, Microsoft has had a tough go of it this generation, and I hope it. I hope this is the shot in the arm that that they you know I I, I don't I don't think it's going to help them catch up to the PS4 at this point. I don't, I think that ship has sailed, but um, hopefully this begins to right the ship for Microsoft because we should all want three very stable, very healthy consoles. No, I agree. I agree. I was telling Colt this uh, before you went on air. You know, I think, I mean, obviously for them, they're in a much better position with the launch of this console they were in 2013. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. But um, they feel like they have the confidence back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a little bit of sw that that swag back. Um, Colt, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, is he there, Cole? Cole yeah, Cole I'm sorry. Out. I'm so sorry. No, no, no I was gonna say Cole, Cole passed out because I was talking to him. Oh my gosh, 
I can't he's like, get I back get, up. I'm sorry. He's like, I need, I need water. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm out my family. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so totally lost. I have no idea where we were. you were talking about uh, all the consoles you own. Yeah, right. and then yeah, so he yeah, we just kind of ran. He was talking about the consoles he owns. And, yeah, I was talking about the consoles on and the fact that. So you like, said you know, that the you said yeah. that the uh, PS the base PS4 and the and the S are going to hold back the the newer consoles. How how is that going to happen? So I, I haven't seen it yet. So what? Well, not just from a visual, because you know, I mean, you got to look at it like this: the PS4 vanilla and, and the xbox one s are still going to be the flagship consoles going forward the ps4 pro and the xbox one x are enthusiast machines uh-huh. um, not intended for the mass mar- not intended for the casual audience when i say the casual audience i mean like you know the mass market which is probably 90 percent of gamers right yeah about i agree i agree um so those are going to be the real sales drivers these hol- the, this holiday season like you know here's a great example if if you know if mom goes out and little billy says i want a ps4 or an I or an Xbox One, um, is Mom going to buy him the three ninety nine Pro or the four ninety nine X or the one ninety nine? No, yeah, the, the S and the one ninety nine S. Yeah, I mean, so so those consoles are going to be the prime movers for sales, and so every so and so Sony and Microsoft are going to make damn sure that whatever plays in the Pro and the S and, and the X play play just fine. On the, on the base version. So, like, you know, I mean, this isn't a new generation. These are iterative consoles, and they're all yeah. play the same games. Um, so when I say holding it back, I don't just mean from a, from a, a what these, because, I mean, imagine if there was a game that could play on the PS4 Pro or the X and not the base consoles. Right, yeah, because we won't see, yeah. all the features will be the same across the board on yes. all the consoles because it's a mid-generation. But there's two reasons why we won't see a game dumbed down just because the Slim and the S are more popular. <laughs> The first reason is um, every multi-plat game is also on PC. So those developers who are developing for PC are going to push what they can do on the X and the Pro. And then they'll do what they regularly do for the Slim and the S. The other reason is um, a dumbed-down game won't be first-party because if Sony has a first-party game, they want it to look the best on their platform. So they'll make it look great on the Pro and the S. So you'll get the better higher resolution or better frame rate on the pro, same thing with the X, you know. With oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I don't want you to. I don't want you. So I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. I, 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 when I say that it's holding them back, it's holding. It's going to hold both these powerful consoles back from what they could do if, for example, there was oh, a game yeah. that you, 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 you know, you see what oh, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. If there's a game that was playable on the X or the Pro, but not the base consoles. And um, I would hope. I would hope that most uh, of us gamers have tempered our expectations about. Uh, not getting special features because we bought the four or five hundred dollar console, but yeah, it, it, now I see what, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So sorry, maybe I wasn't clear enough. That's that's kind of my point. Is is that uh, you know you were even if like because so I have a friend who's playing Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X, and he says it looks wonderful, and I, I have no doubt the Xbox One X. It looks wonderful on the Pro. I, I, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing it on the Pro right now. It looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but imagine what it could look like if they had produced a game that could not run on either base console. Uh, and, 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 yeah. and, and, and I think that a lot of people from both sides who are buying the Pro and who are buying the, the Xbox One X, <coughs> I, th- I think a lot of people are, I don't want to say vastly overreaching or overstating what these consoles are going to be capable of. But I do think that some people, like you said, Colt, are thinking that they're going to get some kind of special special i don't know special something aside from a slightly prettier visuals and and i just i don't know like i um well look at it like look at the pc version of assassin's creed. let's just stay on assassin's creed origins um the pc can do it do it all sky's the limit but what more i watched digital foundry put the pro and a thousand dollar pc um head to head on assassin's creed origins and i'm watching that going look at how great the pro looks compared to this 1080 yeah, this GTX 1080, and that is really telling about how great these mid-generation consoles look. And um, like, what more does the PC get? You know, they get games that don't come to console because they are so massive, and they and they require more than 14 buttons, which is typically on a on a gamepad, right? So, like, they get that sort of feature set, and maybe on the PC you'll get uh, you'll get more frame rates. But you know, frame rates are something that are just going to happen. Yeah, um, well, and that's something that I hope. Cool, that that Microsoft does better than the Pro has done because one like you know I have a PS4 Pro 
and I, I have one because I have a 4K HDR television, and I was like, and you know, I had an, a PS4 lying around. I had two of them, and I was like, okay, well, I'll trade one and get a Pro. Why not? Um, yeah. uh, and one thing that the Pro, I think, has stumbled on, and, and I hope that Microsoft doesn't fall into the same trap of, is I want to see more options on the X for prioritizing resolution over frame rate and prioritizing frame rate over resolution. Um, because a great example is Rise of the Tomb Raider on the Pro. You can either play it at 4K30 or at 1080p60. And I will take frames any day of the week and twice oh, yeah. on Monday. Over yeah, that's, and any that's day. coming to the X, you know. that I think it, the more they do that, because that's coming to Gears and Rise of the Tomb Raider and a couple other games, but we need that. We need them to do that on the Pro or the X because the devs will keep saying, man, every time someone does that, it gets really popular. And and they, and they get the metrics, right? I'm sure those guys get the metrics. Of how course. Many, how, how many of their customers are playing in 60 frames mode? And we need that. We need that because don't you think that developers have this just stuck mindset with consoles that th you need to get 30 frames first and then we'll get the visuals after that. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a mindset. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and what's really interesting to me is, and this is why I am fine with console gaming, right? Um, a lot of what this boils down to is optimization. You know, and you can have a, you can have a game that runs at, for example, 4K 30 on the on the Xbox One X or the PS4 Pro, but it, but it, but it plays and runs like shit because it's not well optimized. Um, look at what and, and look at what's happened. And you know, people have this foregone conclusion that everything's better on PC. But look at what happened to games. Like a great example is Batman Arkham Knight. Yep, they had to take that off the fucking market, and I still don't think it's fixed. Right? Like I think Jeez. Arkham Knight is still completely fucked on the <laughs> on, on on the PC. Um, the, there are other releases that have been completely borked. I've, on, I've uh, I've been on my PC gaming like 90% of the time for two years solid. I know when games don't work right or when they should be doing a lot better than what they do. And it frustrates the crap out of me because I've spent a lot of money. I, I also love console gaming. And you can see why. <laughs> so, like, I think my least favorite part of all these iterative consoles are, is, the, is the, the ammunition it gives either side of the, you know, the holy wars. You know? um, and yeah. that's, that's really, in my opinion, that's what they've done the most of. Is is cause more division within the within the gaming community, but that that's a whole that's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> but Enrique, B money, get in here, man. Colt and I are doing all the talking, man. <laughs> no, no, no I, you know it's uh, this is a good conversation. Because... I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I I really enjoy talking to Colt. Colt, you're you're a cool dude, man. I, <laughs> you could tell we both like talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, this no, is I love no, this talking is... gaming. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I think this is a great conversation. You guys bring up some some really good points, and you know, I agree with both of you guys. Where I would want to see that option, like you were talking about, I think what they did with Gears is mm -hmm. awesome, and I want to see more developers do that. You yes. know, one of the things that I, I think, you know, as, as I was reading some of the reviews and I was kind of digesting more of what the Xbox One X is, and and you talked about, called, I think, why well, not use the Pro? You use the PlayStation Four Pro. As an example, I think with Assassin's Creed on Digital Foundry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you know, but even like the Xbox One X version with Shadow of uh, War, um, and, and what Digital Foundry was saying. I mean, you know, if you know, for someone who's an enthusiast, if you want those PC-like experience, but you don't want to, you just mentioned I I spent a lot of money on my PC. Sometimes games don't work. You know, I know uh, John mentioned uh, back uh, Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, I think Forza was the Forza Seven was having issues. Um, yeah. I don't know if Microsoft fixed that yet, but um, yeah, they have, they have, but yeah, it's but ridiculous. I, but I think for $500, if you're yeah. an enthusiast, you want that kind of almost PC like experience yeah, and with not? the potential of 4k. It's, it's, it's not a bad value proposition. Look, you know, look, look, you know, people say, Oh, well, you know, the X is not worth it. or It's not worth the money. Look, I mean, if it's worth the money to you, then get it. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. Get it. Like, I, I mean, you, you know, I don't, I'm not going to dump on anybody for wanting a console. You know, if you are excited about it and you want to pay the money for it, more power to you. I am not, it is not my place to tell you what you should and should not be excited about. Would I pay $4.99 for a video game console right now? No, but that's because... John, I can tell you right now why you won't buy an X. How many Xbox games do you own? X None. ones. There you go. That's None. why. Why would you? And that's the same reason why I haven't bought a PlayStation 4. I'm probably going to buy one uh, this spring. When uh, God of War and Spider Man come out, that's when I'm ready. I'll grab Uncharted Four, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider Man, God of War. I'll be ready. Th well, this I, is the time when it's good for me. Like well, I have exactly. 
you don't have any Xbox games. Why would you go buy a $500 console just because everyone told you it was so powerful? And I do all these Xbox videos. I'm not trying to get somebody who's never played on the Xbox to uh, throw a bunch of money into the whole ecosystem. The X, the, like we said earlier in this podcast, the X is for the people who are hardcore about that platform. They have a big library of Xbox games. They see all the games that are enhanced that are games that they like. They're the ones that went out and are slamming those pre-orders. Well, and you know, here's the thing, right? Like, I will probably, I, I am, I am very, I'm leaning heavy on getting an Xbox One S this holiday. I mean, well, fucking one ninety nine. Why not? Yeah. The, the reason I have not got an Xbox, you know, people say, John, you don't get an Xbox. And Enrique, B money, you guys have heard this. John doesn't have an Xbox. He's a PlayStation fanboy. Your pony. No, that's not true. I don't have an Xbox because, I, quite honestly. I am so invested into the PlayStation ecosystem. All my trophies are there. I've got like 25, 26 fucking platinum trophies now. I've got something like 6,000 fucking bronze. I mean, I've, I, I mean, I, I, that's where all my, that's where all my progress is. And I'm a fucking trophy. I, and I, your friends. I, I'm going to, I, yeah, all my friends are there. Mm -hmm. So, so why would I, I mean, why, I mean, all, and you know, all my friends get Destiny on PS4. All my friends get Battlefront 2 on PS4. They'll get Call of Duty on PS4. Why would I jump? That makes no sense for me to jump ship. It right, and it's, and, it's and, like the, it's the people that you know attack my tweets or my comment section of my videos about Xbox because uh, <laughs> you know that's where my friends are. All my friends are on the Xbox platform. All my games are there. It's like, wait a minute, what? You you don't have anything invested in the Xbox because if you do, if you have a platform where you've got your trophies or your achievements and you've got all your friends there, and that's where you do your Xbox Live parties, that you stay on the Xbox. You know, it's yeah, well, crazy to hear these people come in and jump into my lane when i say something uh, like when i say hey this game is now getting an enhancement on the xbox and a sony guy jumps in is like well what the xbox has no games like whoa whoa dude you you don't even belong here this is not your place right I've now i never understood that narrative this generation like from both yeah. sides like you know like you know playstation 4 has no games xbox has no games I'm like what the fuck have i been playing this entire generation <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, like, it's like, like 1,300 versus, I think there's 1,800 plus games on the PS4. Am I, have, I been in the, have I been in the Matrix this entire time? Like, like, <laughs> is, this, have, is, is, like is this just a simulation telling me I've been playing all these games? Like, I, that, 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 that's, you know, that's the one, it, it, you know, Colton, since I, you, you've never been on, on this podcast before, I'll tell you, what I what I say to all fanboys out there is, what, regardless of what you like, whether or not you like to play fucking PlayStation Four or Xbox or Nintendo or fucking mobile or PC, what happens tomorrow if gaming dies? Oh gosh! Guess what? We all fucking lose. We all yeah. lose. We all lose the same. So let's just all fucking get along and enjoy our games because you know what? If this if this hobby disappeared tomorrow. It's gonna suck equally for all of us, and we we are only and we're gonna have only each other to fucking cry to. <laughs> and, and, mobile and, and there's that we don't play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's and there's more, there's more things as a community we should probably be focused on. You know, uh, like I don't, Activision's. I don't, yeah. You know, yeah. Luke Craig thing and algorithm, whatever they have that patent, things like that. That's the new normal, by the way. I hope you guys are ready for that. Because yeah, well, thank you, Take Two. <laughs> I don't even necessarily think it's a bad thing. I, I, I mean, because, you know, a, a lot of this is due to the fact that development costs are rising. Um, and now Wait, John, that, but Matt, okay, wait, hold on, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but Matt, uh, we had Matt Piscatello on last week, and we asked him that question. He said it's not because of rising development costs. He well, said, look, it's just because there's a market out there for it. Well, you know, yeah, well, they're well, their pockets, man. That's it, what it is at the end well, of the day. I, and, well, and that was my next point, is the fact that it's there because people are fucking buying it. And it, you know, if people don't buy it, then it's not going to be there. But, but like oh, Matt right. said, there's a fucking market for it, and and they're making money hand over fist doing it. Look at um, Take Two. Forty eight percent of their their revenue is from unbelievable. It's a free revenue stream. All the developers have to do is build the UI, the interface to get to the microtransactions, and set up an ecosystem that works based on how gamers function. And yeah. uh, it's a it's a revenue stream they they depend on. And if we're going to blame anyway, we can blame the developers and the publishers if we want. But I can't help but blame all the people who fuel those microtransactions with their debit card. It's them. It's their fault. Yeah. Like, like John said, quit buying them. Yeah, but I mean, we can say that in one sentence, but in another sentence, you know, you, you got those guys out there who have limited time to play video games. Yep. They play four eight four to eight hours per week. You know what I mean? They they want to be right along with their friends. So, you and, know, when they when they jump on GTA, they don't they don't want to be the guy without the mansion or 
have the crazy cars, you know what I mean? Well, and, like and, they want to be able to do all the all the heists and stuff like that. So and the guys, spend the guys quick cash and go go play. The guys be money, get be money. The guys you're talking about, that's I, that's nine, that's the that's the casual audience, which as I've said is ninety percent of the video game market. So these yep. things are not going away any time. Like like for example, like I play games every fucking night. Like I literally, I, that probably sounds sad, but I don't give a shit. I play games every fucking night. <laughs> I know, I know. I, am, I every fucking night. Sad, it helps. It helps when your wife enjoys games too. Um, oh, nice. But but um, yeah, that's why we got a PlayStation upstairs and one downstairs. Um, I got the pro downstairs because you know I'm the man up in this piece. But, <laughs> You're crazy, man. I'm the man but, up in this piece. <laughs> but, you know, that is you know like. I, I don't I, I play I, I play games every night and and I play games to completion so I don't I don't need loot crates I don't buy them you know like I'd rather spend my money on games but as B Money very astutely pointed out there there is fucking you know joke you fucking the ragman out there working you know you know sixty hour weeks you know he's got five kids he doesn't have time to play games like I do so yeah he, loot crates make fucking sense for him and he can afford that because unlike unlike him I'm buying like fucking five games every month he's buying. He's buying one game every three months, so he has the money to throw down on loot crates. He has, I would he, think if you didn't have time to play games, you wouldn't care if you were up with your friends who just kind of deek around on the game and then be done with it. But yeah, it must, it must be there. It's to me, it's weird. Like uh, you talked about how you you don't have time to play all the time, but um, like I gave up on the first Destiny because I couldn't devote three or four hours to do a raid with seven people that I couldn't sync up with with my limited schedule. Um, having a family. So when it came time to raid, I was fed up with Destiny. I'm like, this this game is not for me, obviously. It's not for my personality and my schedule. And even if you could buy into the raid with microtransactions, which you couldn't, uh, I would never even think uh, to buy a microtransaction to get up with my friends. I just said, that, this game's not for me, I'm done. And I moved on to Far Cry 3 or whatever it was. I don't even remember back then, but or Far, Far Cry 4. Um I've never purchased a microtransaction in my life unless you count DLC like story add-ons. Um, I've never purchased them. I just never have because I always thought as a gamer, if I wanted to get unlock that car and need for speed, um, if you're going to lock it by playing the game, that's why I bought the game was to play yep. it. Well, and I know I sound holier than thou, but that's just how it is. <laughs> I, I, it, it's actually more of me being a cheapskate. I'm a super cheapskate. <laughs> well, and, there's no wrong with that. Oh, sorry, be my name. I mean to cut you off, man. Sorry. No, no, you're good, man. I th the the only microtransactions that I've I've ever spent any money on was playing 2K, and it's just like you know, and like I mentioned, yeah, I mean revenue streams. By the way, be money for take yeah, two. Yeah, take two is it's yeah. one of the biggest ones because you know, just like I said, everybody gets the game day one, and everybody wants to be the man day one. So, I'll be right, guys, guys, I'll be right back. If you okay. spend your money on VC, you rank your guy up because I think they, they, they start your guy at like a 50 and you get on the court and you're trash. You know what I mean? You're missing open shots and layups and Jeez. you know what I mean? You can't, you're crossing yourself over. So you spend extra cash, you know, because you don't want to go through all that frustration. So you spend an extra 20 bucks, you know what I mean? Get some VC, rank your Does guy up. And that then, way, it'll be money. Like, do they kind of build it in that way? Like, to I mean, you, you don't necessarily have to spend cash. I mean, but you know, when you when you first buy, it, of course, you want to go play on the court with everybody else. So you don't you don't want to be that guy that's out there losing the ball or turning the ball or over. Shorts. You know what I mean? They got your character. Nobody, out nobody wants to pick you up. You know what I mean? Because because you're trash. So yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. Two two K and Take Two have definitely found like the perfect uh, equation to to get people to spend money. You know what I mean? You can see it in the earnings report: forty eight percent. Up, oh, you know, what I mean, with microtransactions, that's that's crazy. That's insane. Blew, that blew my mind when I saw that. You know, I, I had a, I had to run upstairs real quick to to uh, do something for my for my wife for just a minute. And you know, like you can walk in a room and you can already tell what movie somebody's watching <laughs> just by hearing it. Like yeah. like 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 uh, what kind of movie are you talking about? I, I literally I walk in, I walk in the living room and I can't see the TV, but I hear uh, I hear all right, all that jelly, no toast. And I was like, you're watching fucking. Uh, you watch the fucking training day. <laughs> I, I just I heard that. I was like, oh shit, it's training day on TV. I almost stayed up there and watched it. I fucking love that. Point. Yeah, um, I've look. I've I've been guilty of buying microtransactions. I did it on Battlefield, you know, and I knew people who couldn't put time into Battlefield, 
they yeah. would buy unlock like the character classes the weapons so they can get all the upgrades on the weapons you know like the scope and everything like that yeah i mean yeah. there's not look look there, inherently there's nothing wrong with micro like if you want if you want to buy whatever in a game i'm not going to tell you, you can't that's fine um i just have two things one as long as you can earn it in game and as long as it's not pay to win uh, yeah. If you can guarantee, like for example, a great example is the game of the year, Super Mario Odyssey. Um, you can uh, you can unlock different outfits for Mario using you different say it was game, of the year? game of the year. So far, it wow. Um, oh, dude, the game is fucking just delightful. It's no, it's it's amazing. great. I mean, I've, wonderful, I've, I've, complete wonderful game. I've already got fifty hours in it. It's a fucking wonderful game. Um, but uh, and I, I've got fifty hours. And I've got like five hundred moons. I don't have I have half the fucking moons in fifty hours. That's insane. Um, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but uh, you can unlock different outfits for uh, for Mario based on like you know what amiibo you touch in. I've got a huge collection of amiibo. Um, but every one of those costumes are unlockable in game. You don't need the amiibo to get them. You can unlock everything. Um, and uh, that is the model that that is the model that I like. As long as you don't get fucking stupid with it. Like like, did you guys see that in Call of Duty World War II? There is a mission to watch people open loot crates. John, by the yes, I did hear that. By the way, five hundred million. Yes, I insane. Mean, okay, so I was wrong about Call of Duty. You, you know, I, I was wrong. I said this one was not going to sell as well as the, as the other ones, and I was fucking wrong. It was it doubled so, uh, the last one. I doubled. Yeah, I was very wrong. <laughs> I was right about Destiny, you motherfuckers. I was right about Destiny too. I told you that shit was going to kill, and it did. I told yes. you it was going to murder, and it did. But I was very wrong about Call of Duty. I was so fucking wrong. But I'm not wrong about November. I think I think Nintendo is going to win the MPD. In November. I think so too. Um, if, they, if they keep up the demand, I think Nintendo's got it. Yeah, well, let's get back to the Xbox One X. I know we kind of went off on a little bit of a uh, a rant here with with loot crates, microtransactions, whatnot. That's, that's, um, that's what we do, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Cole, do you have any other thoughts on uh, the Xbox One X? Uh yeah, I mean I have lots of thoughts. I'd like to have <laughs> I'd like to have mine so I could check it out. But um, I'm the same boat, man. I've heard, I've heard tons tons of good stuff from everybody. Um, I haven't really watched. I only watched a couple of reviews. Uh, some some weird gripes like uh, the dumb things like it's too heavy. Well, yeah, it's a lot smaller and they packed in a lot more hardware in there. So yeah, it's heavy, but who cares? Who the fuck's carrying um, one extra? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be sitting on a shelf. Yeah, it's just weird. It's eight pounds, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, you see them tear it apart. It's like it's <laughs> there's no room for air. I don't know how they're cooling that thing, but uh, I, actually, I do know how they're cooling it. Uh, some other weird gripes is like they're complaining about the one terabyte stock hard drive not being big enough for all these big 4K games. It's like, well, uh, if you want you know, better graphics and higher textures, you know, the file sizes are bigger, yeah. but uh, Albert Pinello of Xbox uh, shut that argument down pretty quick and explained that there was no uh, two terabyte hard drive on the market that met their specifications for their memory, memory bandwidth and their speed of uh, loading and running the game on the, on the X. So they had specific, uh, specifications for that so they had to go with the one terabyte and also kept the price down i mean a two terabyte that's the weird thing like people you know why didn't they put a better cpu or a bigger hard drive and throw in the lead controller it's like man it's it's 500 dollars console do you want to be 700 i don't i wouldn't have bought it so that's kind of where it's sitting right now and the enhanced games are doing pretty well they are yeah um i i've i've heard there have been a few reports of Xbox One X is dying after a few hours, but that probably falls within normal parameters for yep. um, because because I mean every yeah, you're gonna have every, yeah. yeah every every hard I mean it doesn't matter if you're talking about consoles or washing machines like every new hardware launch is gonna have faulty units that's just the name of the game. <laughs> I talked to the laugh. I talked to a guy on Twitter who's his just shut down and never turned back on, and uh, he talked to GameStop and Microsoft, and Microsoft told GameStop to just give him a new one and have GameStop deal with the return the the time frame so yeah. just yeah pretty cool yeah i, I think he's pretty that. fortunate i don't see a uh, i don't see a i don't see a red ring and death situation going on no no um, I, I think they've learned their lesson from that whole thing and uh, and and you know and, and of course you know a lot of this is going to get overplayed by you know zealous fanboys on the internet who say oh my xbox one x exploded and uh 
like the guy who lit up his PS4 Pro. Remember that? Oh God, I remember that. That was fucking like, oh my PS4 Pro melted. I'm like, it it didn't it didn't it it didn't no. So some guy like quite obviously took a fucking blowtorch to his PS4 Pro (laughs) and and put it on Twitter social media. He was like, fucking Sony, like you know, fucking you know, my PS4 Pro melted. It could have burned my whole house down. I'm like. Well, plastic doesn't melt in, you fucking dipshit. It melts out. And so, you know, so, so I, I obviously you were, I mean, and, you know, if the heat source is coming from inside, the plastic is going to melt out. The plastic is buckling in. So you're a fucking moron. Like, you, like you, come on. It's not, it's not even believable. And I'm sure, I'm sure you'll see shit like that for the Xbox One X too. You know, like, oh, it, the Xbox One X fucking came to life and killed my family. And I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tied up in the basement right now. Please, my wife. Please say I had stuff with my wife. And then it gave me the, Made me watch, um, <laughs> but you know, give me dirty Sanchez. <laughs> give me, you know, give me a rusty trombone. But uh, you know, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! So but so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure that you're gonna, you, you, you know, you'll you'll get the same shit. So people, people will find people who hate a thing. In my experience, yeah. will find oh, any yeah. reason to denigrate that thing. You know, whether or not it's, uh, you know, because, I mean, there are fanboys for everything. I mean, there are fanboys for cars. There are fanboys for video game consoles. There are fanboys for televisions and phones. I'm sure there are fanboys for fucking, you know, washing machines. Pro- yeah. Who, who fucking knows, you know? Like, I hope not. Uh, Kenmore hey, and Samsung. Anything's possible. You know, my, my Kenmore gets all the fucking, you know, gets all the grass out, bitch. You know, fucking, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, you know what? It didn't get, you know, the it didn't get your fucking mom's gist stains out. You know, oh my god, oh my like god. That. So yeah, fanboys will find something. Fanboys will find anything to argue about. Just you know, don't let people, don't let people influence what you enjoy. That, that's that, that's the best I can say. You know, yeah, I yeah, it, I I found a gross way of getting there, but I'm there now. So just don't let people affect your enjoyment of a thing. Yeah. Um, real quick before we wrap up the launch of the Xbox One X, uh, be money, man. What are your thoughts, man? Are you gonna pick one up, man? Uh, I'm I'm like uh, all the people who always tell me wait for E3. I- I'm in that same boat, man. I'm wait for E3. Um, in-, in my eyes, Microsoft still has to show me something before I take that plunge. I've bought multiple Xbox Ones and Xbox One Ss. You know what I mean? And and right now, you know, they the hardware looks impressive and all that. Looks looks great, but they they need to show me something different on the, on the games front before I invest any more money into it. So I'll wait till E three and see what happens. And B, that's a that's a perfect segue, by the way, to our next topic. Uh, Phil Spencer um, and speaking with Bloomberg, uh, pretty much confirmed that the company is looking at starting new studios and acquiring existing ones. John, I actually saw your reply. I forgot who tweeted out. Like, what studio would you want to see Microsoft? Yeah, no, that purchased, was my, and you were like none. <laughs> that was my so yeah. Let me explain that. That that was my good friend Jazz Corden, um, and uh, uh, yes, fanboys, Jez and I are are good friends. Um, I don't want to see Microsoft buy any studios, just like I don't want to see Sony buy any studios, because I I want games to be available for as many people as possible, and I feel that a, any studio running around snapping up third party developers is incredibly anti consumer. Yep. Um, and, uh, and, and so like, for example, and, and, you know, Colt, these guys will tell you, I have said numerous times, I'm not happy with Spider-Man being a PS4 exclusive. I'm not. Um, I feel like Spider-Man should be a game available for as many people as possible. So I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm going to buy it because I have a PS4 pro and I love Spider-Man as my favorite Marvel superhero. I'm a big comics guy, but I, I'm not a fan of the fact that it is a, Third, uh, first party exclusives got it no problem the, these these companies fall under the umbrella of whatever company they're owned i mean they're owned by these companies got it um third party exclusivity especially i mean i i don't like that one bit not a fan not a fan um look, a, a great example is uh sunset overdrive i mean insomnia yep. owns that ip yeah i Insom- think i i don't know what kind of deals going on but uh, Sunset Overdrive didn't do very well on the Xbox. And it deserved to. It deserved to. I played it actually, Cole. Even though I don't. Well, have I think that I don't know what the, I was going to say. I don't know what the deal is, but I think that Insomniac should port it over to the PlayStation. They absolutely should. Oh, and dude, you know, people would fucking explode in anger if they did. But but it doesn't matter because the, the game. I played it from start to finish. I borrowed a friend's Xbox. It was a fucking great game. 
uh, one of my favorite games of generation, actually. I, I really enjoyed Sunset Overdrive, and game, yeah. it, it deserved to sell a lot more than it did, and the fact that it was hamstrung to one console really hurt that game. Um, uh, I believe Quantum Break would have sold much better had it been on... I mean, obviously it would have sold much better. Had it been on multiple platforms, I believe uh, uh, Alan Wake is another is another game that should have been on multiple platforms. Um, and and well, the frustrating thing is that, like for example, again, I'll use Sunset Overdrive, Insomniac Games owns that IP. Microsoft does not own Sunset Overdrive. So it is extremely right. frustrating to see games that deserve much better be fucking crippled like that. I hate it. I can't stand it. And they're looking for a publisher. They said that if, right. if they could find a they publisher, are. they would they would make the well, sequel. Look at you look, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, so it, it's just and, and so on Twitter today, somebody said, Joan is trolling. And I'm like, no, I'm not trolling. Like, I don't want, I, I don't, no, I don't want, I don't troll. I don't want Microsoft to run around snapping up third-party developers because I don't own an Xbox. And if there's a fucking awesome game from a third-party developer that they buy, I'm not going to get to fucking play it. And I'm not cool with that. And just like I'm not cool with, uh, you know, if Colt, for example, does not get a PS4 by the time Spider-Man comes out, he's not fucking playing it. And I don't think that's cool. I want Colt to play Spider Man. Yeah, you know, so that, that's, I feel the same exact way about like indies. I, I hate when like big publishers snatch yes. up indies, or you know, what I mean, big brands snatch up indies and they're, they're to, to to one Cuphead. Platform, yeah. You know, what I mean, you, you look at like Cuphead. You know, what I mean, even uh, you know some of the the stuff that's come out on PlayStation. It's like. Why not just release that on all platforms? You know, what I mean, let everyone be able to enjoy that, and you see. Now that more indies are starting to trickle onto the Switch, they've they've seen a lot of success there. So yeah. I just don't understand why you try to, you know, be both. That's why, you know, be money. That's why I get so frustrated. Like before Titanfall 2 came out, you know, and you know, uh, fanboys, uh, you know, fanboys were like, you know, hey Vince, you know, you gotta lock it down, lock it down for Xbox, make sure it stays. And I'm like, fucking why? <laughs> why? Like, like, like it's going to sell more if it's on more platforms. So fucking and, why? And I'm then like, the third one will be better because you know it got it was successful. Yes, right. right. I mean, uh, why we got to put we, yeah. we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the developer, like Insomniac Games. Like the reason why it's so frustrating because we don't know that check they got from Microsoft that tells them, oh man, I'm just going to keep this on the Xbox. You know, they look at that that money that offer and they're like, we'll just stay on one platform. We don't know what that check looks like, right? I mean, there's got to be a check, right? There's got to be a check, but I don't think I don't think it's a huge fucking check for something like Sunset Overdrive, like an untested. Well, why would you like deny untested... yourself the uh, at that time when Sunset Overdrive came out? The PlayStation was probably at uh, 18 million consoles, and the, like that, yeah. and the Xbox was at like 12 or 10 back then, right? They hadn't really sped up, but that was a, that was a way ahead before those platforms launched, anyway. So, yeah. here, so here, so like, here's my take on it, right? Like, I think, go, so I am sure the deal for Sunset Overdrive was aimed Hot takes. before, yeah, dude, uh, dude, I'm fucking serving them up. Um, I am sure the ink on the Sunset Overdrive deal was was dry before the generation started. It's not yeah. like they threw this thing together. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, that's true. No, uh, and, and and so and and let's face it, everybody, including me, expected Xbox to go in, into this generation with a strong headwind. Everyone did, off yeah. this. Every day, everyone did, and they yeah. didn't. Um, so, I, and I am sure Insomniac Games was not fucking expecting that. I wasn't, um, and and I'm somebody who didn't buy a <coughs> buy an Xbox One. Um, I was like, you know, I was like, oh shit. So I am sure that that is so, which is why Colt, uh, I believe that the the check for uh, for exclusivity on Sunset Overdrive was probably not all that substantial, simply because they're like, okay, well, we're going to be on what we think is going to be the highest <laughs> platform. Yeah. Um, so who fucking cares, right? You know, yeah. uh, and uh, and it's, it's a whoops, well, shit, that didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. <laughs> um, and uh, and and I, I think, and, and and you'll notice, and the reason I think that is because you'll notice you have not seen a lot of Xbox for a third party exclusivity since, like you've seen Quantum Break. And aside from a few smaller indie titles, you haven't really seen a whole lot. Meanwhile, on the PlayStation side, you've got uh, Bloodborne, Neo, uh, you know, uh, Near Automata, uh, you know, fucking um, Hellblade, Hellblade, Gravity Rush. Gra well, no, they, Gra no. they had thirty-two. They had thirty-two games in twenty seventeen. It's unbelievable, and 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 so and 
let's face it, and and I'll, full disclosure, I mean, I'll I'll be right up front with you. Games game games like Neo and Near Automata absolutely should have been on the Xbox. They absolutely should have been on the Xbox. Um, I I will never ever 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 support third party exclusivity ever. Period. Fucking. I I'll, I'll never do it because I do not I do not support anti consumer practices. Um. So you know so. I, I think that's what happened with Sunset Overdrive, and and I agree. I think if there is a Sunset Overdrive two, which let's face it, there's fucking not going to be, but but if there was, I guarantee you it would be multi-platform. I, I agree to you. I agree. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I ran the numbers, and PlayStation Four and Xbox both have about the same amount of these third-party console exclusives, where um, you get it on PS4 and PC, but not on Xbox. Or you get it on Xbox and PC, but no PlayStation 4. So they both were doing the same garbage. Um, but PlayStation 4 has like double the, the actual real uh, platform exclusives over yeah. the Xbox. I mean, there was a bunch of games that came out. for the. One of my criticisms was there was 32-some games that came out in 2017 for PlayStation 4. And about 20 to 25 of them, nobody bought or could even name them. They were really small games, but they're there, and the variety and option, more options is always better. You know, uh, yeah. don't, don't make fun of a little dinky game like uh, Super Lucky's Tale. It's thirty bucks because it's just one of whatever games that are there if you want them or not. And yeah. I, there's a bunch of games that if I had a PlayStation, I'd never even look at them or buy them on that came out this year. But Horizon Zero Dawn, yeah, I'd definitely buy that one right away. That's going to be the first one of the first ones I buy because that's my kind of game. Like I said early on the podcast. Third person action, you know, open world game, you know. I think it is it, no hyper, it is without hyperbole the best looking game this generation. Yeah, yeah. It is <laughs> like that is it is unbelievable that an open world game looks that fucking good. Like I, I spent, spent a lot it, of time in photo mode. Oh my god! Like I, you don't I even have to be in photo mode. Just taking regular screenshots of that game. And it's funny that the team amazing. that did that did the Killzone yeah. series, you know, they did primarily this first person. Yep. Uh, PlayStation exclusive game, like they, it's like they said, "Hey, let's try this open world third person thing," and they hit a home run. It's kind well, of yeah, they knocked out of the park. <laughs> I have never seen detail like there is in Horizon Zero Dawn. Like for example, like in the in the DLC, the Frozen, uh, you know, you know, you know, the Frozen Wilds. I already know where you're going, John. When she's walking through snow, yep. when she's walking through snow, she'll her foot will break the outer layer of the what of the you know the you know the powdery snow. It'll stop for a minute, and then then she'll. It'll bust through that hard, thick layer of snow underneath with every step, and and I'm like, God, like who fucking thinks of that? And like, holy shit! That if you zoom in on Aloy's face, um, every now and then you'll see like a gnat fly by, and and you'll you'll only see it if you like, you know, get like, you know, how you, like you'll face a tree and then you rotate the third person camera to oh, get yeah. it to her face. Um, you'll see a gnat will like land on her on her nose, and she'll go, she'll be like. Really? I'm like, I'm like, who the fuck thinks of that? Like, holy <laughs> shit! Well, that's what uh, Naughty Dog does. They do the same thing. They do yeah. the little details that um, no game ever bothers to do. It's all immersion, and it's all attention to detail. It's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelie- It's unbelievable how good that game looks. So imagine what that game could fucking do if it could only play in the PS4 Pro and not the base version. Oh, it'd be amazing. Like I said earlier, amazing. But real quick, I want to go back to uh, you know Phil Spencer's comments. So that's and be money. I, I I hear what you're saying about you know E3 and stuff because that's that's been one of my criticisms of Microsoft for quite some time now. Um, you know, first part it, and a lot of that has to do with some of the cancellations and stuff that happened. You know, with Scalebound and Fable, and whatnot. Uh, some of the studios they shut down. Um, but I don't know. Like I, I hear him say these things, and I'm kind of like I'm a little skeptical. I hope it's true. Because um, obviously, it would, it would be, obviously it's going to benefit the platform. It's going to benefit those who own an Xbox One. Um, but I don't know, guys. Like I, I feel like I've we've heard this before, and I'm just not so sure. I'm I not so sure that this is going to happen. I, that's just. I, I mean, I, I think they may they may maybe invest in some new IP, but I'm not so sure if it's going to be like new AAA, you know, IPs <laughs> or new characters, things that like Sony's doing. Well, we heard I, I, before uh, E3 that <clears throat> they were going to have more games that they than they announced the year before. So that's where we heard that before. But saying you're going to acquire studios is something that you should have been saying 
two to three years ago. That's my problem. Yeah, I agree. Uh, B-Money, you were going to chime in, man. No, I was going to say, like, I, I just wonder if they change their tune a little bit at, at this upcoming E3. Um, just looking at, you know, their past history in the, uh, these last couple of years, um, they've always kind of stuck with, you know, we're, we're going to show you what's coming out, you know, in the next year. And I wonder if they, you know, kind of change their tune up a little bit and show something that be, might be a little bit further in the future um, to kind of, you know, um, just whet the appetite a little bit for, for consumers. Because um, I think that's that's probably the, the biggest sticking point for me. You know what I mean? Because I, I think with all of what, what we know that's coming in early 2017, we've known about those games for quite a while. And without them having like a, another event or teasing anything else, um, you know what I mean, for 2017, I have no choice but to wait until E3. And hope, hopefully there, you know, there's something amazing there um, at that showcase. Um, so I, I just I wonder if they, they, they change up the strategy, especially with the, with the new console launching. So let's let's consider this, right? Like, I don't think anybody here can, will or can deny that Microsoft has just had a tough run of luck with first party exclusives this generation. Um, and not that they're not good, it's that they're not selling. Um, Halo 5 sold incredibly well. Um, the Forza games, per, you know, perennially, they sell well. Uh, Sunset Overdrive did not perform well. Quantum Break massively underperformed. Um, uh, you know, fuck, Gears of War 4 underperformed. That game did not sell what Microsoft thought it was going to. Um, uh, you know, Fable Legends canceled. Scalebound canceled. Um... Grant or Grant Theft Auto, Jesus. Uh, Crackdown Three looks like it's going to be a fucking five out of ten. I have not heard positive things about that game. Um, uh, I'm worried it's not going to make it. To be honest with you, I know, no, they'll. Really, I mean, if they don't release it, there's going to be a fucking bloodbath. But I don't. But I think they're going to release a fucking five out of ten. I don't think it's going to be a very good game. Um, I, I mean, I have, I have, I know, I know people who have had hands on time with it who are like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, huh. but uh, I mean, there's a reason that it's not releasing now. Yeah. For the Xbox One X launch, there's a reason. It's because it's not coming along well. Um, th- these games are just not performing the way Microsoft needs them to. So I, so it, I don't blame them one bit for veering away from that and moving towards something like games as a service. You know, um, uh, first part. I mean, they they just had a, a bad run of luck. Now. There was a game that was that was supposed to be in development, and I'm you know I can probably talk about it safely now. Uh, Cold, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but um, it was called Knights of the Ages, and nope. uh, it was supposed to be it was it sounded like a modern day Order eighteen eighty six basically. And uh, Rand and I were talking about Rand Althor nineteen, who is a fr- good friend of mine. We're talking about it offline, and uh, Sam Tolbert, another friend of mine, we're talking about it. We we're talking about. I was like, okay, we're, it's good. they're going to announce Knights of the Ages at E three. And it came and went. We were streaming E3, and it came and went. You know, no nights of the ages, and we haven't heard a peep about it since. Um, Is this the game that turned ten? And no, I, I I don't know who was working on it. I do know that it was a first party game. Okay. Um, so who fucking knows what happened with that? But I mean, if it was canned, if it was axed, then I don't fucking blame them. I mean, these companies at the end of the day are out to to are out to make money. That's what they that Sony. You know, and this is again a message to to fanboys who I know are listening to this podcast. I know you're out there. I know who you are. Um, Microsoft doesn't care about you. Sony doesn't care about you. They care about your wallet, and they are going to give you what they are going to give you what sells. And on Microsoft's platform, this generation anyway, first party games are not selling well. At least not new IPs, uh, and of course, Gears of War. So, so I kind of like- go ahead, Enrique. I was gonna say that's so that's like that's the thing like that's that's the point and I, it's funny I get I've gotten <laughs> I've gotten flack for this too for pointing this out over and over again that you know that they they need to put out new IPs like new characters like Halo's great Master Chief's great Gears is fine Forza fine whatever but like when's a lot they haven't put anything and I think we've talked about this B they haven't put any like new like big major like IP or character or franchise whatever since. You, Gears, you, know I feel like. you know what's so strange though about that is that remember when they first shot off Quantum Break and it was just yes. like that generic guy and yeah. they, yes. they, they brought it back and Sean Ashmore was Sean like Ashmore. the main character yep. like that was their opportunity to make like a new character you know what I mean like That's true. Sean Ashmore didn't have to be the main guy like 
adding all those additional like main actors into to the game, I, I think that was the left turn. You know, what I mean that that really, uh, you know, kind of set that train off track because that was that was their chance. You know, what I mean, it's brand new IP. It's um, you know something different than what we've seen before. It's from Remedy. You know, what I mean, who's who's put out Alan Wake, which made it was a cult classic. You know, you know I mean? that, that was your opportunity to put out a new character, make them feel special and, and, and do the right thing. And I think they they, they missed the ball with that one. You know, B-Money, it's an interesting question, right? And I'd love to see what Colt thinks about this because, you know, he's he's an Xbox guy and I don't own one. But but my own personal take on this is Quantum Break not selling well actually really surprised me because it, it released it. It released at the right time. It wasn't a crowded area for Xbox games. It wasn't a crowd. I mean, you had Uncharted uh, 4 coming, uh, you know, a month later, but I, that wasn't going to affect it because people with an Xbox and you know, a PS4 weren't going to buy Uncharted 4. Um, uh, it, it, the gameplay looked fine. It looked fun. It was a new IP. It, visually, it was very, very beautiful. Um, I don't understand why they didn't sell well. I do understand why Sunset Overdrive didn't sell well because it released at a fucking bonkers time. I mean, October, you don't fucking release a new IP like that with limited appeal on one console on one console in, in 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 the fall season you just don't fucking do that i am not surprised that game didn't sell well um but quantum break really fucking surprised me um i have no i mean that's a that's a that's a great theory be money i have no fucking idea why that game didn't sell i really don't uh i didn't really like it i haven't i've only played a few hours <laughs> of it. you're not you know which weird Cole, you're not the only person to tell me that um, well, it, I don't know. I just it just didn't. I heard it gets better. Like I got to the point when he starts using his his time powers, and I didn't understand them. I mean, uh, wait. So you didn't finish the game then? No, I played it okay. like four hours. I think I I Bro, played it on Steam. I, I played it on Steam. I didn't even play it on Xbox. <laughs> uh, my game share friend on Steam had it, and I played it, and I don't know. I just never really got into it. Then here's the thing about me, and I, I have a different opinion about exclusives because the xbox one doesn't have uh the super awesome exclusives um i don't buy most of them i didn't even touch uh buying halo wars 2 uh let's just kind of go backwards like i bought gears 4 like two mm -hmm. months ago i finally finished the campaign like two or three months ago mm -hmm. i didn't buy wow. it when it released there was way too many games out yeah, I, okay. I, I what when was gears 4 it was out uh, uh holiday 2016 uh, yeah. no um no, sixteen. He's Sep right. Sixteen. September so, twenty sixteen. So yeah. I was playing Forza Horizon three, which is an exclusive. Yep. Uh, I don't know what else was out in twenty sixteen, but I had tons of games. I, I did not have time to bother with Gears. I liked the Gears series, but I waited. Um, Halo five. I bought it when it was used. I, I got. I, you know, I was not in a rush to play that. It looked didn't look as good as the other ones. I still liked it. Um, I don't know. That's just how I am. I don't know. Normally, I'm busy playing the multiplats, yeah, and I, I'm really upfront with people about that because those are the games. If you ask me what my favorite games are, I'll rarely tell you exclusive. Um, Uncharted one, two, and three were some of my favorite games, but those those games are like the best, right? Well, I mean, if we're talking exclusives, I mean, you know, it, it, it's funny you hear Sony fans and Microsoft fans going back and forth about, oh, our exclusives are better. I mean, they're not better than Nintendo. Neither of them. You know, like N N Nintendo is the fucking king of exclusives. That's why you buy a Nintendo system now, is is to play the exclusives. You're sure shit not buying them for the third party games. Um, <laughs> so, they're not there. I mean, you know, I mean, what, what, it's interesting with the Switch, right? Like, like they're coming around. You get and Doom and Wolfenstein and uh, Evil Within Two. By the way, is going to be coming out for the Switch. Um, uh, I I would rather play them on the PS4. Um, but I think LA Noir is coming on the on LA the Noir. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. It's, it's and you're going to see a lot more uh, coming because the Switch is fucking. The Switch is oh, not going to be the, the Switch is not going to be the Wii U. The Switch is fucking is lighting it up. And and I don't know if you guys saw those reports from um, uh, from uh, I think it was from Capcom uh, and I was on a Capcom or Square Enix who said, "Holy shit, we were wrong about the fucking Switch." Uh, so yeah, that was we're, Square. We're, it was that was Square. Square Enix said, well, we were fucking wrong as shit about the Nintendo Switch, so we're going to start cranking out games as quickly as we possibly fucking can, um, which I think is a smart move. Um, uh, Except if you're EA. Well, the, yeah, so. the, Wii was, the Wii outsold the PS3 and the 360, yes. but it didn't have the horsepower, so there was no third-party support. Yep, and, and it fell off a cliff incredibly quickly. Oh, yeah, I mean, but it was super popular, but it didn't have the power to support third-party 
And then the Wii U obviously was a failure. I think it topped out at 11 million consoles sold. So you, you, you know, you couldn't blame Square Enix for not having faith in Nintendo anymore. But think about this. Think about this. The Nintendo Switch by next March will have sold over what the Wii U did in its lifetime. I know. Yeah. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Holy shit. That's insane. That, that, that still blows my mind. Which is why I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a lot of unhappy PS4 and Xbox fanboys in November because I think that if the Switch is going to give up stock, it is going to crush them both. Yep. It's in stock right now, man. I, they had it. If it, is going, if it keeps up the stock, it, 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 it is going to crush them both under the weight of Mario. And, uh, and, and Rocket League is coming out next week for Switch, and I am so fucking excited. Oh, is it really? Yep. Oh, dude, we got we got to get on online then. Next week, uh, next week you have uh, Skyrim. Um, I mean, it, this year has just been fucking bonkers for games. Period. Uh, the best year, best year in gaming. This that... is probably the best year in gaming in fifteen years, and I'm that's I, that's, I mean, it's unfucking believable how good this year has been. I mean, we still got Xenoblade Chronicles two, which I'm very excited about. Uh, that's Rocket game League. I can't wait for. Oh my god, uh, B money! I got the special edition coming, man. Um, my it's, man. Oh, it's gonna be so fucking good! Playing, oh, it's gonna be so good. It. What's that? Someone was playing the Japanese version. I'm not playing the Japanese version. Um, no, somebody was in your in the Discord chat. I thought. Oh, somebody, somebody is. Um, I'm was telling you right now, Xenoblade Chronicles Two is going to be my fucking jam. December first, I'm taking the day off, and I am just going to sit down. And that is why I love the Switch because it just I can. It is just you know from the sleekness of the system to the fact that it's just you know it feels good. I can I can take my I can take my games from my fucking dock right there. I can take them upstairs to bed. You, you know, I can take them downstairs. Uh, you know, down to the couch. I mean, I can take them anywhere I go. The the switch that to me means more than all the power in the world. You know, like like if if I can take my console games wherever I go, like true console gaming, done, 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 fucking deal. I'll do it. Um, but this this fall is just or this we're well, not in fall anymore. But this holiday season is just going to be fucking insane, insane for games. Um. You know, and I think all three consoles are going to sell very well. I oh, think absolutely. this is going to be a great fucking year. It's going to be it's going to be a great fucking holiday season for all three consoles. Everybody, no matter what system you're on, everybody has something to be excited about. Whether or not PS, go ahead, man. Are you? No, I was going to say, are you? As soon as you're done with that sentence, are you going to be able to get the slim for one ninety nine this holiday? You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, we've already seen some ads leak. Okay. Um, that uh, and and besides, like I mean, this is this is the year you do it, right? The, slim, like, the Slim's one ninety nine. I think the S is one eighty nine. Wow, that's cheap. One one eighty nine for the five hundred gig uh, S, and then it's one ninety nine yeah. for the I'd Slim fucking, one I'd, terabyte. I'd be fucking crazy not to go pick up a uh, an Xbox One S. I'd be fucking. So I think this is really <laughs> just gonna happen. For- just to buy, you know, just to play a couple of 4K Blu-rays on for for 189. That's a, that's an amazing price. Yeah, you know, um, I probably won't play that many games on it, uh, simply because. I, would, I, I mean, I would buy to play Xbox One exclusives, which you know I'm interested in Gears of War, uh, and uh, I would like to play State of Decay 2 when that comes out. Yeah. Um, I want to play Crackdown 3 just to see how bad it's going to be. <laughs> um, and uh, and. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else, but I mean, I'm gonna have it. Uh, I'll probably play PUBG because uh, my my buddy Sam and Zach at uh, Bear Claw Gaming really want to play PUBG with me. Um, but uh, which I think those games are terrible. Like, well, they're not. Well, terrible, you played PUBG you know, on PC, right? I played a little bit of PUBG on PC because my PC just wouldn't fucking play ball. And then I played Fortnite. Oh, John, wait, what about Cuphead? Uh, yeah, I'll play Cuphead. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. I'll play Cuphead. I want to play Cuphead. Um, I may have to gift that to you. I want to play Ori in the Blind Forest because that's like actually the one Xbox game where that's I special. Really, that's a special game right there. I man. Really, oh, be money, man. I have people. I, I mean, Rand tells me that that's his game of the generation. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, and I really that's the one Xbox game. Because, like, you know, like, I mean, I, I Sunset Overdrive is a fucking fantastic game. Halo and Gears of War, I mean, are just aren't that compelling to me. Um, but Ori the Blind Forest is my jam. And that's the one where I'm like, oh, I really wish I could play that. Um, and Cuphead looks good, too. I just don't know. I already suffer from massive anxiety. So I don't know if I can fucking handle something like Cuphead right now. Um, I've heard that game is incredibly difficult. It's the, it, it, it is. It, it, it's the Dark Souls of Cuphead. Um, uh, but. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to getting an Xbox One S. Um, I just like like Colt said, I'll probably watch more 4K Blu-rays on it. I'll actually play games, but you know. 
It's crazy that you mentioned all the indies because that's exactly what has me intrigued for for 2018, at least on the Xbox side, man. I think The Last Night and Ashen are like some of the most compelling games that are going to be coming out from indies next year. Night War Battle Chasers, my man. Oh, yeah. Battle Battle Chasers, I'm getting on Switch, though. Battle, yeah, what, yeah, I have it on PS4. I want it on Switch though, because that is the place. That's gonna be the place to play that fucking game. Yeah, uh, Battle Chasers is good. There's a game coming out. I got to play so many awesome fucking indies at PAX East earlier back in March. Chasm is gonna be something for you guys to keep an eye on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Chasm is gonna be fucking awesome. Imagine, uh, it's a bit. I mean, it's a Metroidvania that looks kind of like uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, like video, like visuals wise. Um, oh, so fucking good. Chasm's gonna be so good. There's, I mean, there are just so many. And next year's gonna be fucking incredible too. I mean, next year's just gonna be. I mean, it's a good time to love games. Red Dead Redemption Two. Red Dead Redemption Two, which I will Dragon enjoy Quest. Oh, Dragon right. Quest. Uh, God of War. Uh, Spider Man. Uh, Days Gone. I still, I'm still not convinced Days Gone comes next year. I don't think so um, either. I think we get I think, the I, th- I, th- I think they announced the date at PSX, man. Actually, well, you know, actually, you know what? I take that back. I, it might come next year because they, they cannot really stay gone the same year as The Last of Us Two. Yeah, I think they they can't yeah. they announce the date at PSX, and it's probably early 2018. But I mean, you know, like, but again, this this goes back to the problem of well, what does Xbox have in the pipeline? Because, uh, I mean, they've, I mean, they've they've got to have something. And I'm sorry, but PUBG just isn't going to fucking cut it. I'm sorry, but it's not like like people people think people say, "Oh no, PUBG is going to sell consoles." No, it's not. Like it, it's already sold twelve fucking million copies, or some which one is twenty million? Twenty million? Yeah, on on PC, um, people are not going to go out and buy a fucking Xbox One X for PUBG. They're not. Um, I sure as fuck wouldn't. Uh, so. They're gonna need, and, and you know the power thing. It's great. It, it's only gonna last for so long though. Once it's gonna be just like the PS4 Pro. Once the core all have their Xbox One Xs, you're gonna see sales slow down um, until there's a price drop, um, and the Xbox One S will continue to sell. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the X will sell to the ten percent of the of the Xbox. What is yeah. it? You know. The, we, we speculate that the the Xbox One may be around thirty eight million because something like that. Yeah, I would guess. So yeah. you can expect you know three million X's to sell uh, in a full year. You know, but that that's because the hardcore people are the ten percent. They'll jump on the Xbox the first year they can afford it. Oh sure, yeah. So they'll sell two or three million um, by the end of of the full year, and and I think it, just, and I think it will do better for the Xbox. Like I think it will sell more to the Xbox audience than the. <laughs> the ps4 audience you know what i'm saying because i feel like there was just more excitement for the brand i feel like i i feel like microsoft did a much better job of actually advertising the xbox one x and getting its its fans amped up for it you know like Jeez, i feel like they never advertised for it really I never saw the thing. Uh, yeah i think the advertisement came from digital foundry and like youtubers reporting on everything they had found out about it but like I was, <laughs> I never saw a commercial. I was like, why aren't they promoting this thing? Well, I mean, the like, promotion that Xbox gamers got was the menu at Taco Bell. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I ordered some fucking chalupas to see if I'd win one. Oh yeah, um, I did too. I was like, fuck, why not? I didn't even eat the chalupas because I don't want that shit in my fucking in this temple of a body I built. Um, oh jeez. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, Enrique. You, know, I'm a I'm 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 a physically powerful man, baby. You know that. Oh my goodness! Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, it's a damn sight better than what PS4 did, or than, you know, what Sony did for the Pro. I mean, a lot of the marketing for Xbox was social media, right? Like you know, Mikey Barr tweeting stuff out, you know, and and uh, you know that 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 gag reel, not was well, not a gag reel, but that that sizzle reel they did at E3 last year, which full disclosure, I thought it was silly as shit, but it fucking worked, you know, like you know, uh, you know, it's like you know, uncompressed pixels. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, you know, and like you know, it's a monster. You know, you know, Project Scorpio, and I was like, okay, that's cheesy, but you know, but it works. You know, it's more than PS. It was a grassroots type thing for them. You know, like you know, like Mark Cerny came out and fucking put everybody to sleep, and was like, you're a pro, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, cool. You know, like whatever, I'll get one, I guess. The difference um, is that the Xbox gamers had this gimped console for so long. That, you know the. Almost every game, probably eighty percent of the games ran at nine hundred p twenty. Oh, these are oh, dude, these are totally apology consoles, both of them. 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, the, the, the PlayStation 4 was delivering what it should have, 1080p yeah. gaming. Uh, but, you know, with the API problem on, on, in the Xbox, it wasn't hitting uh, performance. And everyone just – we all put 1080p as a standard. To we, we were supposed to jump up from the 720 HD up to 1080p, and the Xbox wasn't cutting it. So any gamer who was hardcore for the Xbox – uh, knew they needed the X as uh, I don't know. I guess their their penance for dealing with. Uh, it's interesting, you know, you know like yeah. like you know, people say, "Oh, Sony didn't do anything to to sell the PS4, you know, or to sell the PS4. They don't deserve their sales." I'm like, I'll tell you right now, Xbox or Microsoft did more to sell the PS4 at the beginning of this generation than Sony ever could have. Yeah, ever could have. I I, I feel like the the best marketing campaign for the PS4 Pro was fucking Xbox. And their E3 2013. It was. I, I, I couldn't. I, I remember watching that, and and uh, my brother called me afterward. He says, "What did you think of Microsoft's E3 conference?" And I was like, "You know what I thought?" Like halfway through, I thought of Marcus Phoenix, like at the end of his rope, crawling around, yelling, "Revive me!" <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so I, I, I was I was huge on the 360 last generation, and I love my 360. I bought just about everybody every game, and I sat um, and watched that conference, the reveal for the Xbox One in 2013, and I had this look on my face, I'm like, just so utter I'm, disbelief. I'm guessing I was so disgusted by the name, by the Connect. Because the only thing the Connect did in our house was Dance Central. Everything else was garbage. Um, <laughs> I was I was upset about the Connect. I was upset about the price. I was upset about the name. I was upset about um, them doing seventy five percent a presentation about Price is Right. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Coming off of Black Ops Two, Call of Duty Ghosts looked like so stupid to me. And uh, I was sitting with my coworker. We both watched it live. And after it was done, she goes. Wow, that is so awesome! I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I told my friends, I told my friends, do not buy this. We're we're gonna we're going PlayStation this time. I and uh, that's and that's how it how, starts. That's how it started. And that winter, I was convinced I wasn't going to get an Xbox. And then by the time Titanfall, Titanfall dropped, uh, my buddy said, "Come over and check this thing out." And he had me play Titanfall. And uh, Titanfall is a great game. Oh, yeah. First one's amazing. And uh, I had so much fun playing it. And I'm like, oh, I mean, it's like, here's where I'm going to be. And I played with that guy on 360 every night. And I made my decision. And I had to, I had to deal with it for three or four years. That's kind of like where, that's where I come from. And that's like where, where Colt Eastwood's stance is on YouTube. Like, I learned over the years that, you know, with the 900p stigma, that, that Xbox is a great console. And I've had so much fun on it. And then I get to hear from the haters, the hater, Xbox haters, I get to hear all these things they say that I know aren't true because I have the platform. And so I did a lot of videos and I, I was around a lot of PlayStation gamers who talked down to me constantly. And it took a long time. I think I finally shook most of my attitude, like the majority of it, uh, over the course of this year as I've kind of grown on YouTube. But it's still there um, because I get attacked by people who are just... They're religiously against Xbox more than they seem to like the PlayStation. Uh, same thing with the PC gamers too. I mean, they hate me, and I and I have an eleven hundred dollar PC. I have a GTX ten seventy. I have a high end gaming card. I've got a nice i five processor, sixteen gigs of RAM. I've got a stout PC. I've played on for hours. I have a couple hundred games on Steam, and you play, and I'm, I'm talking like nonstop. Not even taking a breath. But I, I got to let you, know, you guys know how I am, right? So I've played a ton on PC. I know where PC falters and where it absolutely pisses me off. Where There's things about the PC I cannot stand. I cannot wait to get back onto a console and just sit back and relax and enjoy my gaming. Because I've always gamed on my PC on a TV with wireless controller. So that's not the problem. It's just all the other garbage. That if you don't play on PC constantly and you don't have a PCMR stick up your rear end, you will freely admit the frustration that it gives you and the stuff that you'll never see on a PS4 or an Xbox. So, you know, I, I know that, like, so there are fanboys on the other side who like to spew hate and say, oh, well, you know, your console sucks, blah, 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 blah. No, your console sucks. What I have found uh, over over my many travels uh, to, to lands far away, um, <laughs> you know, studying fanboys as I do in the wild, um, you observe them. <laughs> observing them in their natural, natural habitat. In their natural <laughs> shitty habitat. What what I have learned is that the guys who do this don't play any fucking games. 
And all you have to do is look at either their PSN profiles or their Xbox Live gamer tags. Um, for example, if you take a bunch of the guys on a podcast that rhymes with, you know, um, uh, <laughs> Here comes. you know, uh, BGS SME, you know, like, you know, like if you look at, uh, we'll just take, uh, we'll just, you know, pick a random guy from that podcast. Well, you know, his gamer score is, uh, 38, there's 38,000, which is paltry. That's a paltry fucking gamer score. That's nothing. That's not shit. Like my, like I have not played my, I have not, I have not played my Xbox. I've not used my Xbox Live profile in or since 2013. I'm sorry, I used it to play Sunset Overdrive, but I, I basically have not used it since 2013, and I have a higher gamer score than this guy. So, and this guy has a huge podcast, you know, yada yada yada, and uh, and, and 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 but and so I'm listening to this podcast, and and I hear this person shilling for Xbox, and like you know, and I'm thinking to myself, but you don't barely fucking play anything. And you're sitting here dumping on people who play the other console, and you're dumping on the other console, but you don't actually fucking hardly play any games. And it's and it's the same on the other side, you know, all the guys on the PS4 on the PS4 side, on the Sony side, who do all the gay porn photoshopping. Oh gosh, um, you know he he doesn't. Uh, you, you know these guys these guys don't play any games either. Um, I've I've looked up their PSN profile. I'm on PlayStation Network. I've looked up their PSN profiles, and I'm like. You sit here and you've got a podcast for PlayStation. You talk about thing, all things PlayStation. You worship. You worship at the altar of Kazurai, and I and you have three platinum trophies. I have twenty five. You know, I mean, there's literally a guy on a fucking Xbox centric podcast who has a th- and and you know, like I'm the fucking I'm the voice of the Xbox community. You've got thirty eight hundred fucking gamer score, dude. My dog has a higher gamer score than that. You say thirty eight hundred, thirty eight thousand. Oh, 38,000. I'm sorry. 38,000. Um, but that's not shit. Randall Thor is a fucking million gamer score. I mean, holy shit, dude. Like, like my brother, my brother's a casual gamer on Xbox, and he has, he has 150,000 gamer score. He doesn't play all that often. So, I me mean, fanboys I have learned on either side are generally fucking frauds. And the actual, the actual gamers, the guys who just want to sit down and talk about games and play games... The normals, as I call them, not the, not the neutrals. Because if, if, if you call somebody a neutral, that's just another word for normal. You're a normal fucking human being. And it, it, we are those are the guys who sit down and want to play games and want to talk about games and don't give a fucking. You shit don't. You'll about never this hear this console war. You you can't call someone a neutral because they're not in that discussion. They don't care. They're I don't, not yeah. on Twitter fighting the battles because they don't. They don't. They're not about that. They don't. They'll never get in those fights. So, because they're actually t- truly normal. Full disclosure, Colt and B Money and and uh, and Enrique will tell you the the term neutral was coined because of me. Um, that was directed at me by a prominent Xbox fanboy. Um, that was directed at me. So I so I I, I was referred to as the King Neutral. Um, and uh, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, that just means I'm a normal fucking human being with a life who doesn't give a shit. About what piece of what plastic box full of silicone sells more than another <laughs> plastic box full of silicone? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just I, and and then I and then I, and then I looked up the gamer tag and I was like, oh, well, you don't fucking play games, so why am I worried about what you say? You don't, you mean you, you know? So for a lot of these fanboys uh, on either side, it, you know, don't let them bother you. Don't you know whatever they say, don't let it get to you. Um, these are people with a huge void inside of themselves, and they and they don't have anything to fill that void but anger and oppression and, and, and hatred. Not hatred for consoles, but hatred for themselves. These people hate themselves. I mean, if you're a fanboy, then, then, then it is an act of self-hatred because you are seeing something in somebody else that, you, that, that makes you uncomfortable. And, and, it, and, and if that's – and nine times out of ten, you're seeing something – that you don't like about yourself, and, and so these 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 people have this terrible terrible emptiness inside of them, and they have to fill it with strife and chaos. That's what really being a fanboy is all about. I've I've seen a massive uh, surge of discomfort uh, since the Scorpio was revealed by Digital Foundry. I started doing these videos um, on my channel, and the the backlash in the comment section from PC gamers and PS4 gamers, you know, PS4 gamers pretending like 
they already have a high-end gaming PC. PC gamers pretending like they've got uh, an i7 and a GTX 10 or a 1080 Ti. You know, somebody who's bragging they have a $1,600 PC and they and they don't need an Xbox. You know, that I don't. I can only look at it as like some sort of threat, like. The PS4 had the power. Now the Xbox is going to have the power uh, differential for this little section until the PS5 comes out. Um, it's kind of crazy the just the all-out attack that came in my comment section. It's just it's absolutely crazy because people um, need validation, man. Yeah, it's really strange. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good point. John. It's purchase it's purchase validation. It, yeah. I I spent three hundred and ninety nine dollars on thing. And well, I can't weird. have you. I can't have your thing be better than my thing. So hey, I real quick, thing. real quick, Colt. You said something about like you know Xbox owners like playing on 900p and like I, I don't know, feeling maybe I don't know if you used the word persecution or something, but <laughs> like know, yeah, but yeah. I never like uh, you know I had an Xbox One X at launch. I never you know despite reading like Digital Foundry and stuff, I never found myself enjoying my games any less. Yeah, uh, same here. It just, yeah, yeah, it was you like, know okay, what I so didn't it's... enjoy, Enrique, was I didn't enjoy the constant uh, barrage that I got because, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time on a couple different gaming forums. Um, I was on the Gamefly social app for mm -hmm. a few years, and that was the worst uh, place to be once the X1 and PS4 came out. We were all on 360 and PS3s um, in 2011 and 2012, you know. Um, we were having a good time. There was no fighting. And then when, when Xbox bombed their reveal there was this animosity against the xbox brand that just grew day to day and i was on these different a uh, couple different gaming forums with people i knew for years and they would just personally attack anyone that liked the xbox brand and it just carried over and over and when the scorpio revealed came uh it was still the same thing but i ne i played mad max shadow of mordor far cry 4 uh you know some of the big multi-plats yeah. i played on my xbox and i loved them I didn't love that when I tried to record them for my channel, they were crappy at 720p with horrible <laughs> compression. Uh, you know, PlayStation had the same kind of uh, recording process too, but um, I had so much fun when I was playing the games because they look great. I mean, we argue about what games are going to look better all the time, but how many of us have two TVs next to each other and we're going flip, 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 flip? Well, yeah, flip. and that's the th and, 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 and you know that's the thing. Like guys like us. We can we, we can look at something and say oh, okay that's in 1080p and okay that's in 4k right like okay that has HDR enabled okay that doesn't but John Q consumer one doesn't give a shit about that and and two he's not gonna be able to tell like like it, like if you yeah. put them if you put them side by side then yeah he can probably tell but but if you show him if you show him a monitor that has a 1080 a crisp 1080p image on it. And then a week later, he sees an image that has a crisp 4K image on it. Nine times out of ten, he's not going to be able to tell you which one is which. Yeah. You know about a casual gamer? Yeah, it's yeah. not for them. Yeah, yeah. it's not. Um, and 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 so, you know, that's why. Yeah, I mean, and that's why Phil Spencer was right when he said this this box is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Um, and uh, you, you know, people just people just need to square with that. You know, and and people need to learn to be happy with what they have, and also to be happy. That other people are happy with what they have, um, you know. Are, are we ever going to see a? Are we ever going to see an end of the fanboy wars? No, we're not. Because no, that's just, no, that's just <laughs> well, it's, it's cyclical. I mean, we're seeing it come full circle now. Where you know, and I've seen this. Like I, I've tweeted this out where I think, oh my god, this is people should just be excited. If you're excited about the Xbox One X, be excited, but don't use it as a, as a weapon to get back at people. And I've seen that, and I'm like, it's ridiculous because. In you know three years from now, let's say the PS5 drops and it's more powerful than the Xbox One X, it then some, you're gonna be, you're gonna get the brunt of, of that back, and it's just it's some just some people can be cycle. reaching. I, I have showed you DMs to where I have brought people back from either side. You know, like like abandon this fanboy shit, leave this alone. Um, that was the, that was kind of the whole point. Be money brought me back. That that was kind of the point of the whole PAX panel that I was on. Um, mm -hmm. is uh, you know like look. You're gonna be a, a lot happier, not just in gaming, but in life, if you just drop this shit and and enjoy what you have. If you stop yelling, stop yelling about what somebody else has, and start enjoying what you have, <laughs> and and it, you're gonna find that you're gonna live a much happier life. And that's not it's just true. for games; that's life in general. Today, I, I tweeted out: Do you ever see a, a a guy in a in a Jaguar or a Lexus drive by the Honda dealership and go, "Your car sucks"? 
<laughs> I mean, that, like you're with your wife and you're and you're looking at the new Honda Pilot or whatever. Some guy in a Lexus drives by, rolls down his window, and goes, "Your car suck." And uh, it's just that's that's what I you know because I report mostly on Xbox stuff now. You know that's that's what I get. That's that's like the the comment section. Xbox has no games. Xbox sucks. It's not going to be this. It's not going to be that. It's like, but uh, geez, but where? don't don't but let no, like, like at the end of the day, man, like these people are going to go home to their what sounds like probably loveless, sexless lives. <laughs> and, <laughs> What'd you say, John? What? Love what? <laughs> loveless, sexless lives. And, and, and you know what? Honestly, like they're, they're the ones that have to live with the fact that they yelled at somebody they don't know on the internet because they own a product that they don't like. Like they, like they have to live with that. You don't I like I, I've I've got I and I, I have shown Enrique and B Money, especially Enrique, some of the hate that I've gotten. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and boy oh boy have I gotten some hate. Um and but you know what? It's water off a duck's back. I don't give a shit because one, I'm never gonna meet these people. I don't give a fuck what they think. And and uh, you know, unless I want to fucking throw down, in which case, you know, bring it. Um <laughs> but you know, I like I don't let these people affect me, like because I, I like what I like, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm, I'm enjoying my gaming experience. And if I'm enjoying, you know what? If I'm enjoying what I'm doing and it's making you angry, then I win. Yeah, that's true. I win. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i happy, and you're obviously not. So I win, motherfucker. That's, yeah, the, you know, that's the way I look at it. You know, Cole, we, 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 I mean, I think when you're, when you're on YouTube, you know, you get people who – you know, are, you just get people who are just going to be negative all the time too. I, I've, I found that in social media, uh, people use it as an outlet to, I think like John said, they're not internally, they're probably not happy people. Yeah. And it's, it's a safe and easy way for them to kind of unleash, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know, I had, I, I saw in last week's comment section on, um, on the last podcast we did where, you know, we got, I mean, we were talking about the um, Last of Us Part Two uh, uh, trailer. Uh, game show trailer, and you know, violence and stuff like that. And people were just like laying to us, calling us like, "You, what are you guys, a bunch of softies?" I'm like, "What? Like, pussies?" You yeah, know, yeah. Like, like, I'm like, "What? What are you talking? Like, where are you guys getting this from? Like, like really?" Like it's not even that serious, but people were like, "Yeah, why don't you like, why don't you nut up?" I'm just like you fucking fucking social justice warriors. Yeah, fucking, like, fucking ad- advocating for women and saying it's not a good trailer. <laughs> fucking violence is awesome, man. Like <laughs> motherfucker, you know, <laughs> like I'll kill a man, you know, like fucking, <laughs> you know, hey, man. If I was in that situation, I'll snap a bitch's neck. You know what I'm talking about, man? It's fucking realistic. Violence is a part of life, man. And you know, fucking, I don't. Yeah, there's certain things I don't like because I have a family. You know, I just I don't like certain types of violence. And yeah, I mean, just, people are different. What the heck is people? <laughs> it's not even no, like that it's violent. Like, it's just a, it's just a bad trailer. But here's the thing: we we were having a like conversation about it. Like nobody was going off on the deep end and or or, or insulting someone or insulting people who thought the trailer was okay. You know, we we're like, hey, look, if you think the trailer's fine. That's great, but here, here are the reasons why it made us feel uncomfortable, and people took issue with that. Well, typically on my videos, I get about ten to twenty percent thumbs down, uh, and I, I also see the same comments. You know, ten to twenty percent of my comment section is a bunch of you know yeah. jerk offs who are angry or not happy, and they don't want me to be happy, obviously. And uh, the problem for me is it's hard to tune it out. It really is difficult because I put a lot of work into my videos. Like I pour a lot of effort, talent, and time into my videos because I really want people to appreciate them and, and enjoy them and maybe learn something that they may not have known. And um, people come in and start firing off because they have a bad life. You know, My personal problem is I, I let it get to me too many times. And then you know, if I don't, I don't even know because like John may have said something to me 17 times on Twitter, and I probably uh, fired back at him because I'm so used to it. 
I called you a fucking Xbox, man, because all you do is put down PlayStation, bro. <laughs> fucking PlayStation is the best place to play, man. We got all the fucking best exclusives. We got fucking, <laughs> fucking Uncharted and The Last of Us, and all you got is like fucking racing games and some stupid first person shooting games. And you got the fucking, like, the controller, like, you can fucking moor a fucking ship with that thing. Like, you know, fucking, you can, what? You can moor shit, man. Why don't you fucking open your ears and listen to what I'm saying, <laughs> man? On the, on fucking, the wild seas, man. Get fucking, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you know, all, all Xbox has is some fucking slow down time bullshit and some fucking zombies, man. Fuck Xbox, dude. PlayStation, the best place to play. <laughs> but, oh my God. It's, just it's pretty, probably, it's pretty it's rare probably what I did. It's probably pretty, it's re- really rare in my experience. I've, it's rare for me to see someone with a rational like counter argument. You know, normally it's it's just uh, slapping down a grenade and, and walking away. Like, yeah, yeah. most of the time the stuff like you, you know, you'll you'll say, okay, well, how about this? He's like, yeah, I don't know about all that, but I just got done fucking your mom in the bathroom. Like, yeah. Wait, John, you shared a story with NeoGaf. Uh, when you <laughs> what you were talking about was it Final Fantasy or and someone's like you're a dick licker or something? What was it? Oh god! Oh yeah! Like oh yeah! No no no! I was in the Marine Corps, and uh, I was a much bigger dude then than I am now, and uh, and like and I was like, yeah, I really like Final Fantasy games. And this one guy was like, hey, you're a fucking dick licker if you like Final Fantasy games, man. <laughs> fucking you know, fucking Final Fantasies or it's for fucking fairies, man. If you're in the Marine Corps. You need to play fucking Call of Duty, man, because it's what we do. Fucking killing is a natural part of life, man. Not fucking big swords and fairies and stupid fucking dragons and shit, man. <laughs> fucking spiky hair. Fucking fucking dudes who look like chicks running around, man. Like that's not all. That's I'm not about that life, man. I'm not about that life. And if you're about that Final Fantasy life, man, you're into some weird Japanese porno fucking hentai shit. I bet too, man. Like, that shit's just fucking unbelievable, man. Can't believe a fucking American would play that shit. Why don't you nut up and play some Call of Duty, man? And then, like, fucking, like, and, and I'm just, I'm sitting here going like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And then I'm like, well, you understand you're a fucking Lance Corporal talking to a sergeant, right? So why don't you shut your fucking mouth? <laughs> oh, but, you know, it, it, oh, I'm like- sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to. I'm like, shut your fucking mouth. Or I'm going to come over there and put my foot so far up your ass that nine months later, you're fucking wife's gonna get burnt my toes <laughs> here's the thing though like we we in like like we all have our preferences right like that's that's one thing i think we can all agree on like you know we we may have preferences on what consoles we play and we could have disagreements and, and that's fine but the issue um and i think what you're saying is people throw grenades down they just walk away yeah and i see it a lot in the community um you know we've seen it with you know john i this one's been bugging me all week, you know, we, and I'm not going to mention any names, but we see it, it gets to the point where we see it where, you know, there's certain members or gamers of the community that start harassing journalists, you know? No, um, man, and- no, it's not harassment, man. I'm fucking trying to make a point. I'm just trying to correct fucking incorrect information, man, because this is a game that has nothing to do with me, and I have no fucking stake in it whatsoever, man, but I'm not going to fucking sit here and the journalist <laughs> spread false information about a fucking game, man. So you know what? Take it upon myself to take it the sword of righteousness and fucking stab evil in the heart with it. <laughs> Jesus. So, I mean, but we could all disagree. We just have to disagree respectfully. That's and that's like I, like I just don't understand. And 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 what what's really kind of, um, shocking. I guess maybe I shouldn't be shocked, but a lot of it's a lot of this stuff is is done by adults, and that's a part that just like yeah. blows my fucking mind. I'm like, you guys are grown men, like. What are you doing? Yeah, you know, this I'm is supposed, sure. to, yeah. It's supposed to be yeah. fun. Yeah, it's their their age is. <laughs> I fought with some guys that are a little bit older than me that have been just pretty. They just don't back down. I've, I'm, there's people that just will never stop the argument, no matter what. Uh, just fa- I mean, I facts. But I, I just there's some people that I just have to mute because they do, they won't stop. I'll I'll mm. just hear uh, people who follow me continuing the argument. I'm like, hey, you got to mute this guy because he won't. This guy won't stop arguing with you until Phil Spencer says we're canceling the Xbox division. This guy on Twitter's right. It's over. We're calling it quits. Everyone, turn in your Xboxes. <laughs> we're all going PS4. My, you know, it's, my, just, it's unbelievable. My, my my favorite, my favorite, my favorite fanboy interaction of all time. 
was this Xbox fanboy who actually became, I guess later he became like a PlayStation fanboy. Because again, these guys, it's not about consoles. It's about a fucking emptiness inside of them. It's gotta be um, popular, man. But, whoever popular. That's what it is. This yeah, guy, people. this guy, I was going back and forth with Twitter on him and he's not on Twitter anymore. I don't know what happened to him. Like, I'm trying to remember his name. It was something Lebowski. Um, but we were going back and forth on Twitter. I was just like, okay, dude, I mean, you're obviously a fucking unstable. I was like, so whatever, you know, like, you know, you're probably sitting right now in the corner fucking smearing peanut butter on your balls and, you know, jerking off your own shit, you know, and and that's fine. You know, you do you, you know, but I'm going to do me. Um, and so he's, he, he's, he, and he's, 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 he tweets me. (laughs) He says, he says, I'm not somebody you want to fuck with. I'm like, Oh, (laughs) okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, dude. And so then, oh, like God. the next day, it, 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 well, the, and then he tweets me back one more thing. He's he, he he's he's like, "Oh, you'll learn." I'm like, "Okay." And so, like the next day, I get a I get a DM from this guy because my DMs are open, right? And I get a DM from this guy, and it, it's not a message. It's just a <laughs> I can't say shit. I'm laughing. It's just a picture of this very obviously tubby guy, and it's his silhouette, and he's holding a machete, and I'm like. Oh my okay. gosh. I was like, okay, like what what the fuck is this supposed to be? <laughs> like, <laughs> it, 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 like you know, and, and then, uh, so like for another day I don't get anything, right? I'm like, what is this? Like, like, why are you setting like what? one, you don't look like you can run without collapsing a fucking heart failure. And and two, like why? Like did, I mean, if you wanted to scare me, just text me or like give me a picture of a gun or something. Like your silhouette holding a machete? Are you serious? And uh, and so then finally he gives you back and he's like he's like I want you to know that I'm pl- you know you know you're playing fire and I'm like oh, gosh. <laughs> I was like dude I'll tell you what I will give you my fucking address I will give you my address and I will let you come here I will t- I will staple one foot to my ass and you can try to do whatever you want with the stipulation that whatever I do to you we put it on film. Dude, that's that's weird, man. I'm, that's like, just... I'm like, I'm like, as long as you promise me, I can film this. That's you, weird. You can, you can, you can literally, you can literally come to my house and 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 you will and and we'll and, and we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun because you have no fucking idea who I am or what I, or, or or what I've done. And uh, and, and, and and you know, event, of course, you know the guy he did he never DM me back and then he blocked me and I'm like, okay, like what the fuck was the point of any of that then? Like, why? Yeah, just a weirdo, and, just a weirdo. There's just weird. I checked back in on him like six months later because I was like, I wonder whatever happened to that guy. The guy who fucking like tech sent me the picture of his shadow holding a machete. <laughs> this DQ little fucking machete. He's probably, it was, it, oh God, it was, oh, it was so perfect. I mean, like, I had this metal picture of what I thought this guy probably looked like. And I was like, whatever I'm probably thinking of is probably even more disappointing than reality. And, uh, and so like I checked back in on this guy like six months later. And he was like this hardcore PlayStation fanboy. And I'm like, what happened? I'm like, wait, hold on a minute. Like, you were at the teeth of Xbox and, and now you're and now you're a PlayStation fan? Like, what the fuck happened? It's like what happened to that uh what's his face? Uh Iron Wolf dude? Yeah. You know, Iron Wolf about. dude? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, dude. He was at the real thick British accent, you know, it was like, you know, I'm speaking motherfucking truth, you know. And uh, yeah, that guy, you know, and now he's a super duper PlayStation fan. So these guys, it's not about it's not about consoles. It's about there is something wrong with them, either mentally or spiritually. There is something wrong with these people. And this is the only way that they can fill this void. And to be quite honest with you, I wish that some of these people would come talk to me because if any of them are listening, I suffer from generalized anxiety. I have suffered from generalized anxiety my entire life. So I know what it's like to feel like you got an emptiness inside of you that you have to fill. Um, if And I don't like mentioning names, but if Crap Gamer came to me tomorrow and said, you know what, let's sit down and try to work this out. Let's Let's see if we can find a common ground. I would do it with him. I would sit with him and I would talk with him because... At the end of the day, we're all fucking gamers and we're all human beings and we have to look out for each other. We have to be good to each other. We have to be, especially in the day and age we're living in now. I mean, there's a lot of bad shit happening in the world and gaming is supposed to be a place where we can Kevin all... Spacey. <clears throat> Kevin Ke- Charlie Sheen, fucking Donald Trump, um, you know, North Korea, Russia. 
I mean, there's a lot of bad shit going on. There's a lot of scary shit going on in the world. And gaming is supposed to be a haven. It's supposed to be a refuge where we don't have to worry about fucking being pissed off all the time. We don't have to worry about, you know, we don't have to worry about hatred or fucking anger or going at each other's throats. This is supposed to be a place where we can come to escape that shit. And if I can't escape it here, if we can't escape all that shit here in the gaming world, what the fuck is the point of any of this then? What's the point? Yeah. That's what I would say to any fanboy who's listening is come to the fucking table. Stop this shit. Like, let, let's 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 all fucking let, we're we're in this together. Let's fucking enjoy it together. They're not buying it though. They're, no, they're, they're not. not. And, and it's like, who gives a shit what fucking some reviewer thinks about Forza Seven? Who cares? Do you like it? Great. Then enjoy it. Let's shit. enjoy it together. I love Rise. I had a I played I played Rise twice. Love it. You're like the only person I know who loved that game. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, B. Call someone. Someone help yeah, me out no, here. No, That's I, another I, game. I, enjoy I, Rise, I played man. it for a couple hours. I didn't. Didn't really like it. You know. Anyway, I liked I, it. I, uh, Enrique, I've, it's way past my bedtime. I gotta get, I gotta be up in the morning, so I gotta get out of here. Um, but uh, Cole, I'm gonna follow you on fa- on uh, Twitter, my man. You're a cool dude. Okay. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, Enrique, you mind if I give a quick plug? Yeah, go ahead, man. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, uh, John, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm at Mr. Megadev on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure some of you probably heard of me. Uh, some good, some bad. Um, uh, we have a podcast, Super Performed Games Cast, which goes live every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I highly recommend you can check us out. Uh, last week we gave away Super Mario Odyssey. Um, uh, you know, we've had a lot of we've got all we've had a lot of interesting people on. Uh, we've had Susan Arndt from Games Radar, uh, Mike Huber from Easy Allies is a friend of ours. He'll be on again soon. It'll be his fourth time on the podcast. Uh, we've had interviews with people like Naughty Dog and House Mark and uh, Mike Laidlaw, the creative the former anyway creative director of Dragon Age. Uh, Tr- uh, Jason Trier's been on the podcast. We we have a lot of cool guests. Um, you should definitely come check us out. Uh, and yeah, no fanboy bullshit. Uh, no fun, no fanboy bullshit on our podcast. We just uh, we had the go- and Maddie Beast points out we had uh, Seamus Blackley, we had the Godfather of Xbox on our podcast just a few weeks ago. Enrique, you were there for that. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. That was a lot of fun. Seamus is a cool guy. Um, and uh, I will be appearing at PAX East next year on another panel. I'm not, I can't talk too much about it yet. Uh, but I will, I will be back uh, talking about some interesting things. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys, uh, hope you guys look forward to it. Hey, John, I just want to say something real quick. How funny was that tweet by Rally's Checkers? Oh, so good. Oh, that was so good. That's why, dude, these, these social media accounts are getting better every fucking day. But, dude, they, they – I was like – I actually they, put a Kefka gif out there. I was like, oh, so good. Uh, it just it, – it's you know, that's my favorite game of all time, so it spoke to me. And uh, I was just, oh, that was so good. Um, should I uh, – should I do some walking before I leave? Yeah, man. Well, you know, uh, Colt, it was a, a real pleasure sitting around the talking video games with you. Um, I had a good time. And, you know, B-Money, you're a cool dude. And uh, I always enjoy being on a podcast with you talking about all these video game boxes. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Enrique – you're okay too, you know. You're you're not as cool as B Money, but honestly, you're not a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can honestly say I had a lot of fun on this podcast tonight, but my video gaming friends now have to depart. So, without any further ado. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah so um we're probably gonna wrap up here too gentlemen unless uh anyone has anything else they want to say quickly no no it was good it was fun thanks for having me on i appreciate it no no we called it was it was our pleasure you know we had um you know jay fonzarelli on two weeks ago and um you know i reached out to jay i was like hey uh so I know that you guys have podcasts together, and I've seen a couple of your videos. So, uh, you know, I, I get the work that you put into your videos because I've seen it. I think one of my favorite videos that you did, which I thought was really cool, was the 30 frames per second versus 60. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an important video. Yeah, and, and it was great because I've actually – I mean, like, I know – obviously, like, I know 60 frames is better than 30, right? Mm-hmm. 
but the when the way you laid it out, you actually you could see it. You could see the difference. And I'm like, holy shit! Like this is a great video. Yeah, I spent a lot of like I told you, I spent a good two years playing on PC only. I was buying all those games I would have bought on Xbox. I was uh, eventually buying them all on PC, and so I was playing so much stuff at 60 frames at will. And uh, I just was hoping that that would be an option for console gamers because I really felt like there are so few games that run 60. You know, like all your multiplayer shooters do and stuff like that. And I, it's just something that people need to see. Because I was learning on a 4K TV, 1080 60 looks fantastic. You know, it's it's really really cool. So I wanted people mm -hmm. to get an understanding for that. So yeah, no, thank you, I appreciate it. No, I, it, no, it really was. And um, you know, if, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, uh, definitely check it out. And um, you know, give uh, Colt a follow on Twitter at Colt Eastwood. And um, yeah, man, like I said, you know, it's. Um, I, I understand, you know, the, the frustration, you know, um, we've, people have come at us and, uh, B, I know that people probably come at you guys too on tick, you know, it's, um, but you, you got to tune them out, you know, that's, that's probably the best thing to do, you know, and it's, uh, keep doing your thing, man. Like I said, I mean, those videos are great. Um, I, I always, I always go back to that, that 30 frames or 60 frames. That's probably one of my favorite videos. There was another one you did. Um. It was like the breakdown of games, I think, that were going to be 4K, I think, on Xbox One X. Yeah, yeah, which I was using my best educated guess bounced off of another expert. We, we looked at all the uh, games, like the previous versions and what the developer typically does and what kind of games run at certain frame rates and certain um, resolutions. Yeah, we did the, our best work. And so far, a lot of those games are turning out to... Uh, be right yeah, yeah and that was very insightful because you know for someone who is thinking about getting this console at the time i was like okay you know what let me see let, you know let me see what's potentially on the horizon that gave me kind of a little bit of a word about okay the, these are these are possible titles that that you know are going to be options for me if i if i get this console so yeah man just keep keep doing your thing man yeah you know, thank it's, you it's, it's, it. yeah you, i mean you, you you clearly have uh you know gained a a pretty good following um, you know, I, I looked at your subs, <laughs> so, so yeah, you know. I was, <laughs> I was at about 1200 in April, so it's been pretty, uh, amazing and, and, uh, just the growth of my channel going from, you know, up to 25,000 now, I mean, uh, still like microscopic on YouTube, but it's afforded me the opportunity to talk to people like you and to podcast with guys like, uh, Jay Fonz and all day and, and the people of the RDX podcast and dealer, and and to game with these guys, you know, hook up yeah. with them on parties and talk and talk tech, talk games, and just get to know a lot of people around the world. It's been really cool. It's it's really a privilege. No, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, uh, if if you use this platform for good, you know, you'll get some good things out of it. You know. Well, yeah. I, I, sorry, yeah. I don't want to keep no, keep it going, but I, one of the other great benefits is. Um, I'm also a graphic designer and I've designed, you know, 20 different people's um, gamer pictures or their social media picture. Um, so like you'll see people on Twitter who I've drawn their character or designed their logo or their, their podcast logo or their YouTube channel branding and stuff like that. So I've worked with people in the UK um, in Wales in Germany and worked with nice. uh, different vets from different countries. It's just been really cool. And kind of, uh, so I've been able to meet people that way and make a couple bucks doing what I like doing, which is drawing and creating stuff. So it's, I'm really thankful. No, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And, you know, the, the thing too, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're happy to have you on Brat, man. You know, it's, uh, like I said, we don't, we don't do any of the console war stuff, you know, as you heard John talking about, you know, console wars and the whole fanboy nonsense. And we try, we try to present a platform where, you know, we, bring on different, um, you know, guests on to, you know, give them a, a platform to talk about video games. And, you know, we try to present ourselves uh, as uh, an option, you know, to some of the craziness that's out there, you know, a place where people can come and feel safe and just, you know, shoot the shit, talk video games, you know, like, like they would uh, amongst their friends, you know, and, you know, we don't have to agree all, all, all the time on things, you know, but we can debate and have a civil conversation about things too, you know? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure most of us where we work, we don't work with a lot of gamers. So 
um, being on a podcast or tuning in, watching your favorite people on a podcast is a, is a nice relief from your everyday work where you don't get to talk about gaming during the day. So it's important. So podcasts like this are great, and, and that's why people watch them. So it's good to have it. It's good to have yeah. it be on here. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Colt, man, again, it was a pleasure. Thank you for coming on, man. We'll have to get you back on again soon. Just let me know. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, it's good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you too as well. And uh, be money, man. Always a pleasure, man. You know it, man. Every, every Wednesday, we show up, we do our thing, talk these video games, and you know we're coming to towards the end of the year. You know the the gaming releases are are starting to wind down, but. You know, like I've mentioned many times before, uh, they kick right back off in January. So 2017 has been has been an amazing year, but I think 2018 is looking even brighter. So um, lot, lots of games to look forward to and can't wait to dive in, man. That's facts, man. That's facts. So, um, B, why don't you plug uh, Tick real quick, man? Yeah, man. Definitely come check us out uh, every Saturday uh, night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at uh, YouTube backslash tick underscore podcast. Um, you know, just talking about the latest and greatest news and, and Xbox. Um, so um, Wood did did finally get his X. So I'm sure we'll be talking about his impressions on it um, this week. So definitely tune in and check us out. Awesome. All right, man. And a uh, big shout out to Eric Jackson, who couldn't make it tonight. We missed you, E, but uh, we'll see you back on again on uh, next Wednesday night, we'll be back at our regular time, as always, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, also, remember that um, we, I know we've been talking about this every week towards the end of the podcast, but we are giving away a free PlayStation 4 console uh, for the holidays. Um, you know, our buddy Chicken Spaghetti, who's actually in the live chat, um, he has been very kind to make someone's holidays uh, special. Um, and he has decided to, and we're very honored by the way, chicken, uh, he selected us as one of the podcasts, uh, that he's going to be giving away, uh, this console. So, uh, we'll have some more news. We're getting close to the holidays as we get close to, um, you know, black Friday, and everything. We'll, we'll have some, uh, some, some details in terms of, um, contest rules and whatnot. So, uh, definitely, definitely keep an ear out for that. Or an eye out for that. And, uh, Hey, what's up? Jay, Jay Fonzarelli says, sorry, I'm very late. Oh, <laughs> No worries, Jay. Good to see you in the live chat. Hey, and big shout out to everyone in the live chat. Um, always a very positive live chat and um, always great conversation. We appreciate everyone hanging out with us this evening. And uh, if there's anyone that's new, um, hey, remember to hit that like button and subscribe as well. And um, we'll catch you guys next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Colt, man, a pleasure again. Thank you. And, yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, uh, We'll see everyone next Wednesday. Everyone have a great weekend too. Peace.